I was facing 25 to life. I had a card game at my house. You just gotta have some and alcohol to keep people playing. It's like a casino. And then somebody ratted on the game. They busted in, it was an illegal search. They found all the that I had. They found I didn't even know I had. They kicked everyone out, they ripped the whole house apart. They were tearing open my macaroni and cheese boxes that weren't even open yet. They would rip it open and dump it all out, make sure nothing's stashed in that. You're an Italian dude, that's hard for you to watch. Come on. Get my reggaeton. <laughs> they found oxys, weed. They were like walking me out of my nice building that I lived in. All the poker chips were in white boxes. So it looked like I was getting taken out with bricks. The valet guys were just like, yo, this guy's in Tony Montana. So what are you thinking once you get booked? I'm gonna be here for a long time. Would you rather go to space or go to the bottom of the ocean? Space. Why? Just because the bottom of the ocean freaks me out. Yeah, I get that. You see that shit they got down there? No one has. No, there's, there's. I haven't seen it. You have. They no send cameras the down thing. there. They send cameras down there. There's Sometimes this big squid. There's things that light up. There's fish that have lights in them. Like, how are they charging up? Yeah, you know? how does that even work? Isn't that so crazy that fish had electricity before we did? It's fucked up. You ever think about that? Yeah. Well, like, fish it, had light bulbs, and we didn't have it for millions of years after them. You want to talk about light bulbs? There's a big light bulb conspiracy. I, I just have figured out. I want to talk about this. Yeah, I've been dying to talk about light bulbs. So, do you know that light bulbs? They have. They've invented a light bulb that never burns out. Mm -hmm. Now all the light bulb companies got together. They're like, we can't let this shit get out because we're our businesses are fucked if this happens, you know. So they shut that down and they're putting out these shit light bulbs just to keep the cash flow coming. No. Yeah, because you sell those light bulbs, all people need to do is buy one bulb. They're done for life, you know. Wait, so how does it work though? It's like got like a mineral in it that burns for, like really efficiently. I don't know all the details. I'm not a fucking <laughs> scientist, but I watched like, you know, YouTube. My uncle posted on something on Facebook. Okay, I read it. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Those deep dives on YouTube at night, man. Deep sea. I've been hooked on on orca videos. You know how smart those fucking whales are? Too smart. They talk to each other. Yeah, they're up to something. Yeah, they, they got, got podcasts and shit now. Literally <laughs> podcast. Hey, that's a pun. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, travel yeah. with pods. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah oh shit, dude. yeah. But no, the way they group hunt is crazy. Listen, you, you've seen that where like they try to get the seal off the ice. I, that was, that's where I got into it. When I saw them plan that attack yeah. on that uh, on that seal that was sitting on like a little glacier, the and criminal like, in we're you. We're just, just gonna bash this shit yeah. up and get this motherfucker. The criminal in you got came out. Yeah. Staten Island Jeff was like, they Yo, jumped them. Let's get the boys together, run this guy's North Face. You yeah, know what I mean this yeah. little bitch ass seal. I, can't, I might not be able to in the neighborhood. Uh huh. I might not be able to beat him in the one on. That's why I'll bring my boys. You see me lose and you fucking jump in. But they plan that attack. Get the wave going. How do they learn that though? And then they teach it to other motherfuckers. They teach it to the other whales. They teach their kids. And then have you seen them now going at boats? Yeah. They're just attacking boats. What's the on. deal with that? Yeah, it's crazy. But like full on, they're like teaching. Apparently, I don't know if this is true. Okay. Mostly because I'm making it up. But apparently there is one whale that got attacked by a whaling ship, survived, and then taught her kids how to like fuck up boats. And then her kids taught other kids. And now there's like a war. I between, believe that. Between orcas and boats. Which I is a bad that. war. I've seen I've seen Avatar. They don't they don't think they win, but it is a real thing. Apparently, like they're going at boats and like fighting each other. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's all white people on the boats too. <sighs> yeah, probably. So it is racially motivated, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? These killer whales trying to take out our white dudes. Take down the whites. What the hell, bro? Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, like if you look at fishing on a big scale, it's very white. On mm. a small scale, it gets a little black in there. You know what I mean? Hispanics like yeah, fishing. Yeah, yeah. But like Chinese, you go, if you go down, but to, I think they get that's still on the big scale. Like it starts like white, really big, and then kind of goes down the scale. And then once it's on just like one dude, it's like 50 50. He's just like a Jamaican dude, just like throwing a line out, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, speaking of those, those uh, whalers, you know, the guys that would go out and kill whales back for when they needed oil, right? Mm -hmm. They would work together with orcas and humpback whales to go get those big blue whales, really. The big monster ones, like the hundred, uh, it's like a football field, these fucking things are. Yeah. You know, so they would kill that and they could sell that oil and everything and they're working together with the orcas. It's just, I don't know, I, I'm 33 years old, bro. This is what I'm doing with my life That's now. why they call them killer whales, though. you know that? Yeah. They, because they're, not, it's actually a mistranslation. This is true. They're not killer whales, they're whale killers. They're technically not whales at all. They're technically porpoises, I think. Mm -hmm. But they're whale. Dolphins. They're, yeah, yeah, so they're whale killers. Like, oh, okay. so they, back in the day when people were naming them, they'd be like, yo, these like, like orcas fuck up whales. They like kill sperm whales. They kill blue whales. They're whale killers. And then when it got translated, it turned into killer whale. But how crazy is that? That these motherfuckers were in pods fucking whales up. Yeah. You know how big a whale is? At least. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, think about yeah, that. Yeah. And, and these guys can go fuck them up. That's crazy. They're just basically big ass dolphins that yeah. are smarter and they're going to plan their attacks. Yeah, exactly. Listen, crazy. I think my brain fluid is low because I just ran this marathon oh, yeah, and I I've been feeling stupid since. No. So I'm feeling a little slowed down. That's okay. Um, uh, I'm not the best guy to ask about these topics because I watched your show and mm -hmm. you have people that come on that are experts, scientists. They talk about. You don't know anything about whales? I know enough to, like, that's where it ends. What we just discussed, I, I've given you everything that I'm maxed out on. I literally um, brought, okay, that's actually my bad. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I thought you were more of like a whale. I thought you knew more about whale stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to uh, have an expert here and we can talk with them, but, you know, I'm done on, on the whale stuff. I'm maxed out. I'm sorry. I, it, I it, thought... kinda, it was after that um, where the planned attack, yeah. that's kind of where it, where it ended. I kind of overestimated your whale ability. I just assumed coming in, people were like, oh, who's Jeff? And I was like, oh, he's just a, he's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. And he's like kind of, he's like a whale, not like an expert, but he knows a lot about whales. Uh, what else could we get into? You want to talk <laughs> about what fucking Charlie D'Amelio is doing? Well, I could maybe, you can, know. Can you steer it back to more like whales or fish or something? Pyramids? Yeah. I mean, what do you want to talk about? You know, this is your show. Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, see, that's that actually is, that's a podcast I did I'd love to do. Is uh, it's called I'm the Guest with Mark Agnon. Uh huh. Every episode, I'm the guest. Okay. So I bring in people like you, and you would be like, "Hi, I'm Jeff. Like, welcome to the show. Um, today on the show, I have uh, Mark, and I would come out, and I'd be the guest every episode." Okay, it sounds a little lazy, but I think that could work. But rotate like the host. Idea. It's not. It's not lazy for for you. You guys have to work really hard. Yeah, I guess host. I'd have to work. Yeah, or just bring in a co-host, lean on them. You know, I don't believe. This fucking set is sick, dude. Not like, not even like gassing you up. It's probably one of the sickest sets Thank you, I've bro. seen. I appreciate it. And saying. not even like expensive wise, because it, it's all just a bunch of shit that looks like you got at a yard sale. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's like curated to you. Yeah. My set that I have, like, I try to keep it looking a little fancy. And all the <laughs> stuff that I have on the walls is just shit yeah. that was given to me. I found laying around, you yeah. know, I don't give a fuck about any of it, yeah. you know? You keep it fancy, unlike me, you know, just like a real dump, you know? It's cool. <laughs> I wish people could smell through the cameras because it smells like a campfire right now. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to develop that technology. I don't know if we can do it yet, though. Like a scratch and sniff Wonka thing Vision. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make them 4D. Yeah, I want Wonka Vision, dude. You ever go to a 4D movie when they, like, like Oh, and they fucking... can finger you, yeah. <laughs> the, I went to that one. You can't smell anything, they but they there's a finger you that shit, comes out of your piss on you and fucking jabs you in the giggy. We yeah. got to tap into that in the podcast world. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we should start probably. All right, look, guys, I'm hanging out here with uh, Jeff FM, aka Jeff Wittick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you nailed it. Logan calls it Wittek, which I think is rude. What's the deal with that? He's the mm -hmm. only one that mispronounces my name, and he's so confident when he says it. Today on the show, we got Jeff Wittek. I, I assume that's how you pronounce it, just because of how confidently he said it. So are you sure it's not Wittek? Uh, you know what? I don't really know. Because when our families came over on those ships and stopped at Ellis Island, you oh, know, Ellis Island. Okay. and they like would shorten names and stuff, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe it was Whitaker or something, you know, like Robert Whitaker. Whitakonsky. Maybe. It could have been something like that. Yeah. And it got shortened down. Are you Jewish? No. Okay. So probably not Whitakonsky. You want to get into that? Whitakstein? <laughs> you might be Whitakstein, dude. You might be Jewish. No, I don't think so. No. I also, mean, another name you could go by is just Jeff Zilla 3000. What the fuck? That's dude. an awesome name. That's, oh that's my a, god! Uh, is, isn't that your original name when you came on Ellis Island? It was Jeff Zilla? <laughs> yeah, they shortened it for yeah, me. Yeah, I think it was Jeff Zilla, and then you shortened it to Jeff. I feel like I'm in a Nardwar interview right now. Dude, bringing that that type of research. You're Jeff into Zilla, it. we have to know. Well, how did you get that? How do you even know that? I mean, it's publicly available on the internet. So, is it in like a write up or something? Because I try to bury that part of my life. It was shockingly easy to find. Look, we've done embarrassing stuff when we were younger. We all have. Don't say we. Why are you saying we? We all have. I heard the stories about what you were talking about earlier outside of here. Um, don't bring those up. We're going to edit that out. Don't you, you dare, know, don't you dare bring up that story. I'm happy I got into the internet when I did <laughs> because there, I have a lot of embarrassing shit from yeah. before that. Behind Even the cuts. Hair. I thought behind the cuts was good. Bro, my old Tumblr, you're going to air that out? Okay, I you know how you it. said You know how you said that I get I get <laughs> notes, I get, I get the final edit? Okay, yeah. No, no, that's cool. You can leave it in. Yeah. It is what it is, you know. I like it. I don't actually. I don't think it's bad. I think it's cool. You should see my early stuff, dude. It's so bad. Were you into that Tumblr phase? No, I miss Tumblr. I miss like the swag era of the internet, like uh, Mickey Mouse hands doing like a middle finger with like a, a snapback and like, oh, yeah? cargo shorts with the boat shoes and like double Nike socks. I miss that. 
I was kind of, I observed it, but I was like a little young for it. What were you in like a, like a juvenile hall or so? You were in like a camp? Did your parents send you away to like a, a boarding school or something? No, I was just a, just a sheltered Catholic boy. I had okay. six siblings. I grew up in Florida with my, my large family. I was homeschooled till fifth grade. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Damn. that gives you like a slight, not full, full blown, but like a mild amount of autism, I think. So yeah. that's, the, that's the amount I have. But all that to say, I missed like that Tumblr era, but the stuff I was making probably like even like six years ago, dude, it's bad. I have this one video online. It's uh, the very first video I ever made on the internet. It's me jumping into a ball pit downtown Orlando. And basically like, I was like, okay, I'm just going to make a video that I think could like have viral potential, make people happy, like be like a cool video that I would enjoy. Yeah. I didn't really have like a point of view on the world. I think I was like 21 or something. And no, I was probably younger. I was probably 20. And the video was going like building a ball pit downtown Orlando and then stopping people on the street and being like, Hey, do you want to jump in the ball pit? Oh, so it was like a YouTube video. Yeah, literally. And I like scripted it out three minutes, like got all the shots I wanted to end it with like a nice, like emotional. That was scripted? That Not scripted, but like the idea. I had the arc. Yeah. I knew okay. what I needed to get. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to keep filming until I get someone to like open up about how their day was. So none of it was fake. Excuse me. But I like had the arc of the show, of, of the video. And then I put it on Facebook and did like 26 million views. Get the fuck out of here. First video. Literally. I was like, what the fuck? No way. And then I did like four more of those. And then... Those all started doing good. And then do you know uh, Dwight from The Office, Rain Wilson? Yeah. He had a company called Soul Pancake that did that type of content. I did a contract for them, which that's a whole different story. But I did all those videos. I look back on those. They're so like, it's a piece of who I am, but it's just like very cringy. I look back, I'm like, oh God. But your first shot, you nailed it. Beginner's luck. You just had a viral vid straight out the gate. Yeah, I guess. Maybe a gift from God. Who knows? But no, then it was, so, it was, it was so then it's all been downhill, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of falling off. I kind of have a similar story. I did a a, a homeless makeover, and that was my oh, first video to hit. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. That was uh, that was when I kind of first started the barbershop. I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, but really? I didn't even know what that guy looked like underneath. But because I feel like he was so good looking underneath, that's why it hit. Because he looked like Tom Hardy underneath. But yeah, you it's could kind never of, yeah. tell. It's sort of tough if like you give him the makeover and he looks worse. You just know what I mean? scrap the you're video. Yeah, like, like, ah, dude, he looked better with the beard. <laughs> yeah, put the beard back that on. shit covered <laughs> up, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah, you, no, you did. You did a good job casting with a with a handsome guy. Whatever happened to him? Do you know? Fuck, man. I don't know if I ever said this publicly, but he died after. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. R I P. His name was Jeffrey David Scott, and he was a military vet. And after we filmed the video, we wanted to do a follow up, you know, because it did so well and everybody loved him and they wanted to go like do more to help him out. So I was like, this is gonna be great. We're gonna save this guy's life. He was real, um, like he was fried. He had a big alcohol problem and, and you could tell that it was like, and he, like he did like irreversible damage to himself. He was deployed. Like he, he served in the military? Yeah. Do you know yeah, where, how long? No, I didn't get that much out of him. It was hard to talk to him. He was, he was drunk all the time really. Um, but he would always hang out by my house and he he got hit by a drunk driver, hit and run. They, he got killed. So it wasn't even like himself that, that did it, but it was like a few months after the makeover. Fuck. So. That is brutal. I felt partially responsible too in the beginning wow. because I was like, I made this guy, you know, get this confidence to go all the way down there, all the way, because he went, like he made it miles, like down to Beverly Hills and that's where he got hit, but he would Fuck. never leave my area. So for a while, I never said anything because I felt like the blood's on my hands, you know? Damn. But really all I did was get, you know, I was just trying to do the right thing and help him out. Yeah, I mean, that's that's fucked. I mean, were you sober at this point that you did the video with him? I was sober, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I it was probably was like, time. you probably felt connected even on that angle. You're like, damn, like this dude's going through something like I've been there. Yeah. I mean, obviously not to that extent. And he was only like 38 years old in that crazy, video, right? but he looked like he was like in his 50s. You ever watch like Soft White Underbelly? No. It's a really interesting YouTube channel. This dude, I forget his name, Mark something. Uh, but he interviews just like people with crazy stories just like on the street. It'll be like, you know, homeless dude, you know, prostitute, drug dealer, like that kind of thing. Just like short little profiles. On okay, I think I've seen those. Beautiful portraits. Like the thumbnails always be like a black and white portrait. Yeah. And dude, just the toll that like being homeless takes on you is crazy. Like I really, I don't know. I always had such a weird connection to like homelessness in the sense that as a kid, every time I saw a homeless person, I was like, oh, that could be me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I thought that. Like in hindsight, I'm like, 
probably like unless I had like an addiction or like a mental health thing, it probably would be hard for someone like where I was born like of a middle class family. I probably yeah. would be fine. But I was always afraid of that. And so my whole life I always like I don't know, I was just like every time I saw a homeless person, I would like go talk to them or just like see what was going on. I was so curious. Yeah. And uh so many of them, dude, it's like a freak thing happened. They get hooked on like opiates. It's like so fucked. Yeah, I had that fear too. I think we probably all like all people go through that fear that one day you could end up like that. But once you learn a trade, you're like, you know what? I could always fall back on this. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, once yeah. I learned how to cut hair, I was like, cool, never be homeless. Yeah, you know? isn't that wild? Even in jail. When what I think it's a Catholic thing. Um, what do you mean? I oh, just like a fear that like, you know, everything could go wrong. Like we could just be homeless. Like yeah. I was raised super Catholic. So I'm like, I wonder if that was like, in my head for that reason. Yeah, I was raised super Catholic too. Mm -hmm. My parents are super Catholic. Uh, last Christmas, they tried to bring a, a homeless guy to sleep in our house because it's Christmas. And mm -hmm. it was like, my dad's like, come on, like, what are we doing? You know, like, you're going to get fucking killed here, sure. you know? But they are super, like, sweet, good people by the book, religious, go to church every Sunday. I don't know what happened to me, you know? <laughs> Black sheep, only one in the family to ever be arrested, get yeah. in trouble. Does your dad still work? No, he's retired. He's retired. How long did he retire? Uh, probably 10 years now. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You said in the doc he was a bus driver, but technically he's like a train driver? Yeah, yeah. Well, he was. Uh, he did like a, a few different things. He, he was a train. He drove trains, locomotive or whatever. Um, he did that, and then he worked in the bus depot, and he would do like like all different jobs, like clean up mm -hmm. and, you know, like just random shit. But the bus drivers were like smug, you know, like they were higher ups. Oh, really? And he didn't like that I called him a bus driver because he thought I was like embarrassed that he did other stuff and he didn't want to be spoken of. Like, like I'm saying he's something he's not, I'm not saying that my dad's a lawyer or a fucking doctor, you know? That's so he funny. He did do these things, but he had like beef with the, with the bus drivers. That's so funny. Cause like, but <laughs> you calling him a bus driver is actually a higher position than technically he was at that time. Yeah. So he was like, oh, you're ashamed of what I do. Yeah. That is wild. Yeah. But so he worked hard. He was like a hardworking dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He worked nights. Yeah, busted his ass. Your you whole know, life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he worked up until he could retire, basically. Couldn't wait to get the fuck out of there. He told me a funny story one time. You know that song? Um, obviously, you know the song, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, of course. Um, where it's like, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me. Killing in the name of? Killing in the name of, yeah. yeah. So that was like one of his favorite songs at one point. And it was one of my favorite songs too. Like right before they were supposed to play at Coachella, like right before COVID hit and stopped it, yeah. I was really big into that song. And it's like, after I told him that, he told me a story where he was just fed up and he was in his car listening to that song and he was, had to go into work, but he waited till to hear the end of it. Cause that's when it gets to like, fuck you, I won't do, do what, what you, you tell, tell me. me. And then he went into, he went into work and his boss told him to go like fucking clean some shit up. And then he just went off like, fuck oh, you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of similarities I notice in us as I get older. I'm starting to turn into him. It's, it's terrifying. Wild, huh? It's crazy how it happens. Yeah. Like, dude, my parents are so out of touch. My parents are so this. And then you get older and you're like, you can't escape it. Yeah. 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 Fuck, I'm becoming that. It's wild. Was, now, your, was your dad angry about the work he was doing? Like, was he generally like, pretty happy about it? I think he wanted more out of life. You know, I think he wanted to, he, he had other things that he wanted to do. He went to college. You know, he wanted to be a school teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. But, you know, back in those days, you you know, you were just pushed to get uh, like safety, like have a job with a pension and health insurance and stuff. So, you know, having kids, you know, now you want to, you just got to take what, you know, is going to be safe. So mm -hmm. that was like the safe bet, him taking that job. And yeah, I feel like he, he would have liked to do some other things, but, um, you know, it, that's what he ended up doing and he did it for, that's, that's just how it is. And like, Cause Staten where, where Island. Did he grew up. He grew up in Staten Island. Yeah, everybody's either a, a bus driver or a fucking sanitation worker, a cop or a firefighter. You know. Yeah, it's interesting. Staten Island has, like, a little. I don't know. Some cities I think have it more than others. But like New York is interesting because like in Manhattan, there's very much like an aspirational dreamer mentality. I yeah. find. But and then just a borough over in Staten Island, there is very much like a blue collar. Who do you think you are? You're not better than us five. Hundred percent. So correct me if I'm wrong, but like you have people that have jobs, they have you know the jobs that their parents did, the jobs that their community does, and if you try to step out of that, people will look at you and be like, "Well, you think you're better than us? You think you're you yeah. think you're better than like Staten Island fucking yeah. you know 
Yeah. Like wop shit. Like 100%. is that really? Yeah. And then you got to be like, "Well, oh, I just wanted to try." And they go, "No, no, no. That's that's not us. That's not what we do." Is, yeah. that, is that fair? 100%. You can't say I'm going to go be a comedian. I'm yeah. going to go to Hollywood and yeah. I'm going to go make it out Who the there. Who are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the that's fuck? that's yeah. the energy. Yeah. And then even if you're you're like starting to make it, you're still going to get fucking pulled down yeah. by these people. So, so your dad being like, "Yo, what if I'm a school teacher?" They're like, "The fuck? Yeah. You're going to be a school teacher? Like, do you know what your dad's dad did?" Yeah. Like what kind of work he did? Uh, he, what the fuck did he do? Isn't that crazy how, how I, like, I don't even really know what my dad's dad did. Like, I kind of know, but like, even just one generation away, you're like, oh, fuck, who was that guy? I feel like pre-marathon I would have remembered, <laughs> but my brain flew with the, <laughs> I used it to get across that finish line. <laughs> I don't know. He was in great shape. I remember he was like, he lived to like 95. Really? He still had hair, you know? Which is good for me because I'm in the hair biz. That's what I'm saying. Dude. So that was good to remember. That's a good memory that you know I'll be all right when I get to that age. <laughs> Keep pumping that pomade. Yeah. Um, no, but he had seven siblings too, like you. Yeah. Very oh, similar. That's wild. Mm -hmm. And so your dad is like, okay, this is the work that I'll do. This is what everyone in my community does. Like that's cool. Yeah. And then your mom worked in like secretarial work, like working in a, yeah in an office kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. She worked in an office. Um, she worked in World Trade. Right. She was in 9/11. Uh, made it out, you mm -hmm. know. It's always tough when I say that. Like my mom was in 9/11. I was like, oh my god, so I'm so sorry. I went to the memorial with her uh, just like a few months ago, and I'm seeing people like kids I went to high school with and shit. They're like, yo, Jeff, what's going on? What the fuck? You're like, I'm like, oh, I'm here. My mom was in the tower, you know. And they're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, my mom, I'm here with her. Like she's right here, you know. <laughs> and like, whatever you say, Jeff, we believe. <laughs> yeah, dude, she I'm goes to the like, bathroom for one minute. I'm hallucinating. Everyone's like, dude, Jeff is losing it, bro. <laughs> The hell? Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, she she uh, worked after we were like old enough that she could go and work. Mm. Yeah, but she loves the city. She always wanted to live out here. My dad was always like, nah, I ain't going to the city. Man. The fucking traffic, these goddamn city people. Yeah, he hated it. Yeah, yeah. And but, what? And your mom was working, but she raised you guys and then went to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, and so then growing up in Staten Island, like it was kind of roughish the area that you were in like were you getting a fight it a wasn't lot? but i made it rough for myself my father would say that i was i would always go and find like i wouldn't just look for like bad kids to hang out with i would look for the worst people that i could surround myself with and go right into that and go full on 100 mm -hmm. and i feel like i still kind of do that now with like the internet people i hang out with people you know? like me yeah, yeah look at <laughs> look at me what i'm doing here this is the nicest collaboration i've done like everyone else is hated they're like jeff what the fuck are you doing like you didn't learn your lesson last time but I don't know. I'm just interested by people that have um, problems, you know, mm -hmm. fucking people that are nuts. Yeah. Like just, who was your friend growing up that you remember that you were like, oh, this is like a wild kid. You know what I, mean? I know exactly. I mean, I have several people that I could say, but Shaban, still one of my best friends till today. He's Albanian. And you got to we be went, careful with those Albanians, bro. Yeah. They're scary whites. Scary whites. Yeah. They, yeah. Some of them even say the N word, you know, it's like- some. Uh, I mean, they do. Yeah, yeah, Dude. yeah. And, um, I don't know. I can't give out passes, but I think they're good. I don't. I don't know the rules. They're on minorities, it. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but they're don't definitely know white. They're definitely white. I don't know what the exchange rate is, even really, for Albanians to 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 American whites. But I think they're good. Someone in the comments will probably tell us, but I think they're okay to say it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this kid I met when I was like fourteen, fifteen. I started working in the Staten Island barber shop, and he was sweeping up the hair. Probably he was maybe 13 when I met him, giant head, fucking, you know, I remember it, his head was fully grown when his body was just like developing. Oh yeah. And he would just love causing trouble. He just would fuck with people in the barbershop all day long, like everybody, we would just torture everyone. And that's sort of how my barbershop show came about because, you know, you're in a barbershop, you're getting a haircut, you're vulnerable. You know, you, you want to make sure your hair doesn't get fucked up. And then you got kids messing with you, you know, pranking Antics. you and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was your first co-host. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you guys would hang out on the block together and like get in trouble outside of the shop? Yeah. Yeah. So when I started, I went to Wagner High School in Staten Island. And my first day, um, there was like a, a full on fucking beef with the Bloods and Crips. Some kid got stabbed. This kid, um, I think his name was Tyshawn or some shit. Uh, he got stabbed the first day and I remember I saw like this wild beef breakout and we didn't see him again till senior year. He came back and he was like, 
he was legit like fucking Deontay Wilder when he came back. Like six, seven, like jacked. fucking jacked. Yeah, and he was just ready to fucking kill everybody. But, <clears throat> you know, seeing that going to school, I was like, all right, beefs are going to break out all the time. I need people that I can like, you know, team up with just people that are going to have my back. And the Albanians would stick together, you know? Yeah. Like they have that loyalty, like old school, like Italians, like in the movies, like that shit doesn't exist anymore. But the Albanians, they think that this shit's still like, <laughs> we need to fuck in, yeah. like we're at war, you yeah, know? Yeah. And they were just loyal. And I basically was like an Albanian for like six years. Oh, interesting. You know? Do you, do you got any Albanian slang? Do you remember? Yeah. Shipe, that's like bro, you know? Shipe. Uh, I remember Mahashkadi was like, suck my dick. That's, that's what we would say to people. It's good to know. That's always like the way to end an argument too in Staten Island, you know? Yeah, I didn't realize that coming up from Florida, but like New Yorkers, there is, that's kind of how you start an argument. That's, or I guess it's how you end the argument and start the fight. Like yeah. that is like, just, okay, we're going to fight now. And uh -huh. it's just like implicit. It's like, hey, suck, <laughs> suck my dick. Yeah. It's just, okay, we have to fight. Yeah. And, uh, and like bitch is like taken more seriously here. Yeah, I, you know, I, and I find like for sure. Yeah. In Florida, like everyone was a bitch. I'm a bitch. You're a bitch. We're all bitches. You like, want to hear an example of uh, what how Shaban used "suck my dick" and how that transitioned into three fights, three separate <laughs> fights in one day, one 24 hour span. He got into three fights that day. Dude, that's a high value. Suck my dick. Yeah, like normally it's one to one. He was getting out of control with it. He was addicted to saying it to people. He got the three fight parlay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. How do you do it? So, me, my buddy. All right, let me, let's censor that, his name, because he was a heavy drug dealer at the time, and that's necessary for this story. Okay, so we'll change so, his name. Let's call him... Okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Right, we'll also edit that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll call him uh, <coughs> Rodrigo. So it's me, Rodrigo, and Shaban, and we go to Six Flags, and, you know, Six Flags in Jersey, so it's a bit of a drive. Yeah. A lot can happen with three of us in the car. A lot of fights breaking out, making fun of each other, saying horrible shit to each other. But that's like, you know, when you're with your boys, you know, yeah. and you could really roast each other and say personal insults. And, you know, if one of us is laughing, you know, we're all like having a good time. And who drives? Who, who's driving? This was Rodrigo was okay. driving. Yeah, okay. I'm like slipping and saying half his name. Yeah. But um, he would drive like a maniac too. He had, he was the first one to get like a nice car in our neighborhood. He was just pumping drugs. And like in Staten Island, you put all your money into a car. That's, mm -hmm. that's where you like... The most important investment is have a nice car. Yeah. You know, uh, more than your rent, more than your house payment, whatever. He had like a $1,500 a month Mercedes. And we're just blazing the six flags, suck my dick, suck my dick, the whole car ride. And then finally, Rodrigo, who's a bit older, you know, respected guy, fucking tough kid. He's like, you know what? Fucking take it out. Take it out. Come on. I want to suck your dick. Take it out. And this is in front of like, Little kids, families were in a parking lot at Six Flags. Now they start fighting, fist fighting in the parking lot. And it's just me there to break it up, you know? There's just three of us. There's nobody to impress, you know? <laughs> but this is like, and we're all best friends. Yeah. These two are all out trying to kill each other now. We hadn't even gotten into the park yet, you know? So finally, the fucking break up the fight. They squash it. We're all right. But fucking <laughs> What's Rodrigo he fucking hurt his ankle a little bit so now he can't go on the rides he's like in a wheelchair like we find a wheelchair for him and we're pushing him around around the park well, whatever long story short we go through the rest of the day Shaban takes Rodrigo in the wheelchair and he lets him go down the hill and he fucking is just rolling and like slams into a, a, like a gate yeah Pissed off, they fist fight again. Now, this is their second fight of the day. They're, we're done. We got to go drive home now. Fighting in the wheelchair? or He, or he got hopping, up now, hopping, hopping out and okay. trying to fight him. <laughs> That's bold. And, you know, Shimon <laughs> swinging back at him. No fucking shame. You know, yeah. they're just going at it again. He wanted revenge because I think he got uh, the best of them the first time around. So he wanted to get that one back. Like TK or decision? Uh, doctor stoppage, I would oh, say. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. I had referee stoppage. I had to step in so and no stop contest, it. no contest, and then this is the rematch. Yeah, but if, well, yeah, it was a no contest, but if you had to break it down to points, it would have went to Rodrigo. That's so fair. he wanted to get that back. You it know, the Albanian in him, he couldn't take that yeah, loss. Yeah, yeah. He, he wanted to get it back. Uh, they fight again. Now we're like, fuck it, we got to get out of here. Let's just all go home, go our separate ways. As we're driving back to Staten Island, Shaban gets a call. He had fucked somebody's girlfriend and... The guy was furious and Shaban's like, all right, suck my dick. Let's fight. Where you at? Let's meet up. So 
of course we're going to go with him. We're going to have our boys back. He wants to go there and meet up and have a one-on-one -on -one with this kid. Yeah. When we get there, this guy is the star of the football team. He's 6'5 and fucking jacked. And Shaban is a meatball. He's wearing flip-flops. He's got a wet bathing suit on, a tank top with a big fat belly. And I'm like, yo, there's no way. There's no fucking way. And he's like, don't worry about it. I got a Snapple bottle. Back when the Snapple bottles were glass. Do you remember this? Yeah, were you, of course, were you in dude. New York then? Yeah. Okay. I think he's single handedly the reason that they had to change it in plastic. Cause he would that was his weapon of choice always. What was the fact under? Do you remember? What do you mean? The fact under the Snapple bottle, dude. Do I remember that? Yeah, you gotta you gotta check. It's like if you hit the carotid artery, he'll die. It's yeah. like, actually good to know. Thank you for that. Yeah, no, we weren't it, he wasn't reading those. He just <laughs> that was his weapon of choice and you know, he's like, all right, he's confident. He gets out with a Snapple bottle like he's going to sneak it in. First blow is that Snapple bottle off his face, shatters off his face. His own face? Or no, he hits no, the guy, he, he hits the guy okay. with the Snapple bottle. It does nothing. The kid eats it. He goes, he fuck. I think he chewed on the glass and spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, now they're just on, just fucking in the pocket, swinging, letting him go. And Siobhan's swinging up. You know, he's oh, like trying to hit God. upwards and- And what's, what are you in wheelchair doing? Now, we were all done. We hated each other, but we got to go make sure our boy is good. Mm -hmm. So he's outside fighting. He's starting to, you know, this, I, now he's going to be mad about this part of the story that the guy, even though he was a giant and he was way out of his weight class, he started getting more shots in. Like he would land a sh to Shabon's one, maybe the guy would land two. And they're like, all right, we need to step in. So- Rodrigo had a, a CO2 BB gun on him. So he gets out with the, with the, it looks like a real gun, you know? He gets out and as he steps out of the car, I don't think he pulled it out yet, but as he stepped out, we both, we, I got out with him and then uh, the kid Shaban was fighting. He had one of his boys with him too. He hops out, pulls out a knife. So to that knife, then Rodrigo combats that with a, with a, a CO2 BB gun Which, that looks like a real gun, but will do no no damage. You know, mm -hmm. I guess you could light them up with the pellets, and yeah. the, that'll sting them a little bit. Yeah, 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 but you're not, you know, you're not gonna fuck in. Yeah, you're bringing a fake gun to a knife. Fight. <laughs> a fake like, gun I don't know to how. A they, knife yeah, fight. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I don't know. This exactly. is like, like poker. You know what I mean? Like yeah. what's bigger, like a raw flush, or you know what I mean? It's we tough. were not prepared at all. Snapple mm -hmm. bottle, fake gun. That's all. All versus the versus knife that we had. and then six five football player. Yeah, yeah, giant. <sighs> That's kind of tough. So we get out that that's like keeping him busy a little bit. I'm keeping the guy with the knife busy. Rodrigo goes over to help out Shaban. Now they're fighting that guy. The other kid jumps in. It's a all out brawl now. I jump in. I rock the kid, give him old Staten Island side rap. And we were able to win that situation. But we knew that we just started a fucking war, you know? But that brought us so close together. We had forgotten about all the suck my dicks. You know, we were all best friends again. That's far. Yeah. That's kind of what you need sometimes. You need an outside enemy to bring everyone together. Yeah. What's up, guys? We're going to take a break really quick because I want you to take control of your health. Yeah. And that's why I want to introduce you to my good friends over at Bub's Naturals. Bub's is an amazing wellness company that to me is extremely approachable. Sometimes you see these wellness companies, again, no shade, that are like super intense or like, way too like out there. Bubs is an extremely approachable brand that I feel like I actually can, you know, I would like hang with the dudes that like created this thing. I really like Bubs. Bubs is cool for a couple reasons. One, the name comes from Glenn Bub Doherty. Glenn, he's an American hero, Navy SEAL who gave his life serving his country in Libya. And that is who the brand is named after. So if it's good enough for Bub, it's good enough for me. Secondly, here's what you need to know about Bub's Naturals, all right? They got a bunch of amazing products that are amazing for you. Collagen peptides, they got, you know, Halo creamers, they got the Bub's Brew Coffee. But the thing I want to talk to you about today is Bub's Hydration Powder. This right here. You hear that? It's empty because I drink this all the time. I like it for performance. I work out almost every day, whether I'm playing paddle with the boys or I'm going to the gym and actually lifting. And this powder right here that I actually just put in this water, you can see it's a little, uh, you know, I got my little lemon bubs in there. What I like about it is that it, one, it tastes nice. Now, it, it's not too sweet. Sometimes you try these powders and it's just like full of sugar. And at a certain point, you're like, why am I even drinking this? There's just no way this is good for me. I'm literally just like drinking sugar. What I love about Bubs right here, no added sugar. So there's like a little flavor, but it's no added sugar. It's actually really nice and you can work out and it's not too sweet. That's like huge for me. Secondly, there's like a little salty kick. I remember I used to 
go hiking in Utah with my family when I was growing up. And there was a dude that was like a survivalist that would go on these hikes with us and he would make us like a homemade powder thing, like a drink that he made, like an electrolyte drink. And it was so good. And this is the first one that I've tried that's actually similar. It's not too sweet. It's got like a little salty kick so you know it's actually working. It's actually good for you. Duh. It's got Himalayan sea salt in it. And it actually will help with performance. It will give you all the electrolytes that you need from nature, not from a lab, and it will make you feel amazing throughout your entire workout. But you don't have to be working out to be doing this. Sometimes I'll just be sitting here drinking, working on stuff, writing, working on scheduling. It is amazing for anyone, athlete, non-athlete, sedentary lifestyle, working out five times a week, whatever you need, non-GMO, only six ingredients, vegan, soy-free, no artificial flavors, no artificial sweeteners. This is a real hydration drink for people that care about hydration, fitness or otherwise. So if you are interested in checking out Bubs Naturals, what I want you to do is go to bubsnaturals.com and I want you to use the code GAGNON, G-A-G-N-O-N, for $15 off your order. Like I said, I like the Hydrator Dye. This is my favorite. I like the lemon flavor. This is the only one I can vouch for. I really like this one. If you tried the other ones, let me know what you think. This is Bubs Naturals, B-U-B-S, Naturals, N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S.com. A very approachable, down-to-earth, awesome wellness brand that's going to just give you solid, healthy products for your wellness needs. Let's get back to the show. So what ended up happening after, like, because you those guys go to high school with you, right? Or they I think go to it's still an ongoing beef, to be honest. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> if the right. kid's going to hear this podcast, we're going to have to go back. You know? <laughs> yeah, dude. How many Snapple bottles are you going to bring? Or maybe you got to bring Saratoga. You might have to bring some of these. I don't yeah, know this Snapple's is glass. solid. You can't get those glass ones anymore. Yeah, they probably made them illegal after that. Mm -hmm. After that. I'm, Loki, they probably should just make them stronger. Like, how is the glass so weak that it can go through a dude's head and he just wears it? Yeah, I guess if you if the bottle doesn't break, it'd be more effective. But I, I guess because it it smashed on him, broke away. Yeah, but dude, Damn, dude, yeah, that suck my dick would decipher a lot. It would it would start a lot of the the beef part of the fights. You know, and the so actual how, violence. Like, what counts as winning that fight? Um, Can you when we <laughs> left, they were on the floor. You okay, know, that, that's a win. And then we had to take off. Yeah, so this isn't like a. Like we a, won that three on three on two fight. Yeah, not really any props for that. But, but. it was a two on two and a half. You know what I mean? Like your boy is like yeah, old Rod Dog was in the in the hop. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? He was like, hobbling around, yeah, and yeah. this guy was going up in the weight class to fight this guy. So, it, but it, but he was tired too. You know, think about that. He was doing a two a day. You know what I mean? Double header fights. It was his like, third fight of the day. That's yeah, what I'm saying, that dude. was like that's like old UFC when they would have the, the competitions <laughs> yeah, exactly. and you would keep fighting Hit throughout the, the locker night. room, run it back. So I guess it was fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if you really kind of crunch the numbers, I think that's fair. Yeah, that's great. So that's that's Shabon. That's Shaban. He was one of the wildest guys. And I, could, I have stories like that for days. I could go on forever. but um, And did he live in your neighborhood? Yeah, yeah. And where do you line up with your siblings? You got two older siblings? I have an older brother, older sister. My sister's the oldest, and my brother's like four years older than me. Yes. So Karen and then your brother. Yeah, Karen, yeah. yeah. Terrible name. She got fucked. Like, yeah, it's not ideal. She hates it, too. Did, and she, did she change it? No, she just will, like actually if people are really messing with her like she'll fight she'll actually get real pissed off she got in a fight recently at she works on a racetrack in kentucky my sister's tough she busts her ass she like actually works really hard cool. with, she trains race horses she wakes up 5 a.m in the cold is out there in the stable um she does jiu-jitsu she's a purple belt in jiu-jitsu oh, dope yeah, I'm training now. I want to get that. She choked me out last year at Christmas. So I want to get that back this Christmas. I'm yeah, you trying. Got, to, you got like a month to make weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'm stronger than her, so I feel like if she gets me another triangle, I could pick her up and body slam her right, you know, right on yeah. our living room floor, yeah, in front of everybody, put her right through the coffee That'd table. Kind of awesome, dude. Secret Santa. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. fire. Yeah, this is what I got you for Christmas, Karen. Fucking yeah. slam her through the table. <laughs> That's yeah. cool, though. So she's out in, you said that's Kentucky? She's in Kentucky, yeah, Louisville, where they have the Kentucky Derby and stuff. That's like the main spot for, um, I guess that's like the Hollywood of, you know, horse racing. And, so, and she's only doing horse racing. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Did you, she, did you ever gamble on the horses? My dad does. That's what he does now. When you ask really? what he's up to now, he's just yelling at his computer screen. He's just watching horse races, and he bets he's got, like, a little betting thing where he can bet, like, $2 on a horse, and he's going nuts, like, our fucking whole lives on the line. He actually bought a racehorse with his, uh, like, <laughs> saved up. He That was, like, his get-rich plan because you know how you're, like, like we we're talking about, like, what he wanted to do and stuff. 
that was him taking like, all right, the kids are old enough. He has a little money that he put away. He's going to buy a racehorse, but they're so expensive to actually get them trained. They cost like, it's like a Lamborghini payment every month to yeah. keep them just training. And if they don't win, then, you know, you, just you're, just, you're just hemorrhaging money. Yeah. <clears throat> that was the only thing I ever heard my parents argue about. Like they always, they're still together to this day. Horses. But it was about money, like yeah. money that my dad was spending on this horse because it wasn't winning. You know, he bought like one that was a kind of cheap, like, you know, five G's for a horse, which you could get a French bulldog for five G's, you yeah. know? Yeah. Look at the weight difference, you know, the size, <laughs> the amount yeah. you get for a horse. Yeah. You know, so that some horses are like a, a million bucks if you get like the sperm from the one that just won. Bro, like, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like That's you ever see nuts. them extract the sperm? Hell yeah, dude. Okay, don't I think be my too sister excited. has to do no. that. I don't know actually. I shouldn't be putting Bro, that don't out put, there. Don't put that on. You know, my but... sister's jerking off horses. I'm setting myself up to get roasted. It is crazy though. Yeah, that, like you've seen them do it. Where like they pull up with the fucking yeti, uh -huh. you know, the little yeti bottle, uh, like a flashlight, and then they stroke fucking... them. Uh huh. Or like they have them on like the mounting thing, and then they gotta like pull the dick out real quick and like capture it. Yeah, that's an insane job. Yeah, and then you got millions in that thing. You know, yeah. if it's the right horse. So my dad had a way, like, he's like, ah, oh, he's doing his research. He found an auction, gets one for five Gs. And the nut or the whole horse? The whole horse. Okay. He just went and bought, like, the fucking after everything was done. Let's yeah. just see, like, it's, you know. So he gets this horse. It's losing. It's losing. It's losing. My mom's pissed. We're going to, I'm waking up, going to school. I'm hearing them fight and stuff about money. And it was looking really bad at one point. And then I think we were on, we were on vacation in... Um, I think we were in Orlando, where you're from. Oh, really? Like we went to Disneyland or something. Oh, hell yeah. Was it Disney World? Disney, Disney World, technically. Disney I World. I didn't check you on that, but yeah. it is World. You know? Yeah, Land gotcha. is like, you know, West Coast bullshit. Yeah, yeah that's a bullshit one. <clears throat> so um, then finally, the horse has a big win. It won like 80 Gs. And that like was like insane. <sighs> that was like us hitting the lottery. Like that got us out of the hole. I remember my neighbors, they put like balloons at, at our house and stuff. Like it was a big deal. And he hit and that was like, I'm so happy that he got that because I, he never wins on the $2 bets or anything like that. But he crushed it with that. Like, Bro. You know. What, do you remember where you were when you found out that the horse won? Like, do you I remember, think I was like, at Disney World. Like literally at Disney World. Like did yeah. you guys get a call? Like what happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Was I, he watch, He must have been watching the race. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was going nuts. He was there. I don't think I wasn't there. Cause I was just, I would just like fucking go do my own thing. I would go to Disney World or some shit. And I, yeah, I found out. I came home and I saw like the house all decked out. And I was like, all right, cool. Oh, that's fire. You know? Yeah. That is crazy. So your dad was like, yo, we're going to get this horse. Did the horse win after that? Like, was there any, what, nah, that was there was an it. end to the horse saga? Like, you just sold Probably it? Probably put all the money back into it. it like, <laughs> I think he bought a couple more. Yeah. I tried buying a horse. When? I just thought it would be cool. My sister's in the business, you know, like maybe I'll buy a horse and maybe it'll win or something. I, at this time, I was just selling weed and I was like, let me put my money into something. It was real, like, fucking soprano <laughs> shit, right? Like, I think, I think they did buy a horse <laughs> in Sopranos, right? Yo, we got to clean this money up. Yeah. What that's what we, I thought what I was we get doing. A Clydesdale or some shit. Before the horse, horse even got to run it broke its leg so no. i didn't even get to have that one like going out to see my horse race so what it you, broke you, its leg you just smelted it down made some glue or something like, <laughs> not even <laughs> i didn't even get to i wanted to go fucking put it down myself after all the money it <laughs> cost me yeah that's crazy how does it break its ankle like training i don't know and my sister's the trainer so i can't even like she get... was the trainer at the time when it broke his ankle yeah dude yeah that that's was crazy. it that was it. it but if it won who knows maybe i'd, I'd be dumping money into the horse biz but I, I don't know i don't want nothing to do with that shit dude you're ken bro what do you mean like literally ken like from the barbie movie how, what the fuck does, you're how, just like dude i just life is about horses dude it's about is that what horses. he says yeah that's like his, you haven't seen the movie no that's I like his whole shit movie. he just loves horses he's like yeah yeah he's like a western cowboy barbie damn and he's just obsessed with horses really yeah i gotta watch this movie i, think I just did a whole parody so of it and i didn't even oh, watch yeah, with, it with i just Tana, right? yeah i yeah, couldn't yeah. i couldn't get through it yeah you're you're ken dude you just life is horse horse is life that's all it is yeah i guess so it's so weird that my sister got into that though growing up in staten island but she it? probably was influenced by your dad right i think so must have been yeah, like, you're, like I think this sometimes with myself. Like my dad was so obsessed with comedy. Like his dream was always to be a stand-up comedian. Yeah, and he would listen to comedy all the time. We'd listen to Jim Gaffigan all the way through. Mm -hmm. Like on my iPod, it's like Seinfeld albums, Gaffigan albums, like just any stand-up, like all the time. But this is where this you guys were in Orlando yeah, at the yeah. time, right? Yeah. So it was accepted. Like it wasn't. 
it wasn't like, you know, oh, this is insane that you want to do this. Cause my dad was, he, he was interested in it too. Like he would have really? liked to, yeah. When I started blowing up on YouTube, he started a YouTube channel and would get really? some of that overflow onto his channel. Don't send any traffic his way. I cringe at the videos, you know, he's maybe made like two good ones out of like, you know, maybe his 20 YouTube videos that he's made. They're funny to like our, like our family it's members kind of adorable, and shit. adorable, right? Like it's like endearing that you're like, I, yeah, I know that feeling. Like my dad, once I started like really doing stand up, like he didn't take a ton of interest in my other stuff growing up. Like I, he always like was supportive and thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. But like I play soccer and he was like, oh yeah, that's cool. So as soon as I started doing stand up, he was like, you gotta post about this stuff more. You gotta like do like do this. Like he was like in, into it. And, yeah, uh, he, we're really lucky that we have bro, supportive, insanely parents lucky. like it's that. It's crazy. But he was he was all about it. But like I think on a subconscious level, almost certainly, like my desire to do stand up was indirectly or just directly influenced by his interest in stand up. Yeah, and maybe similarly, I don't know. Maybe I'm being too psycho no, psychoanalytical. But like your sister's like, yo, horses are important. This is a thing that like has value to society. The most important people in my life, you know, your parents at the time as a young yeah. kid are interested in this thing. And then as time goes on, you slowly get interested in, in, it, in it as well. And mm -hmm. then you start being good at it and you're like, all right, cool. I found my purpose. Yeah. It's like, I wonder if that happens. And like, even you, like if those horses maybe hit when you were younger, like you would have been like, fuck, let's Fucking, double down on the horses. Yeah. Just making tons of money on that shit. Just yeah. going out there with, bring a girl that fancy hat on, you wear a nice suit. Bro, you where, know? where I grew up, they, they would do greyhound races. They, oh, okay. They eventually banned it and made it illegal. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. That, they were like chopping up the dogs and feeding them to the dolphins or something Probably, after, right? Yeah. It was like crazy. Like the whole thing was insane. <laughs> I never saw it. I was too young, but like I would drive past it and just be like giant like greyhound races and people yeah. would go there and just bet money all day. Yeah. I never yeah. understood that. I, My I, parents took a greyhound that was a, a retired like racing when they adopted one. Former athlete. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just a giant fucking, it's basically a horse walking around the house. Yeah. Yeah, that's as horse as you can get in the dog world. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what what do you think it is about horse racing that is like so interesting to people to get. I don't know. I was never into it at all. But I guess that's like my version of UFC. Like how my dad watches, um, mm. how he's watching horse racing. Like how passionate he is yelling at the TV. Yeah. I get like that with UFC fights. You know. Interesting. Or boxing matches. Yeah, you know. No, I get that. I get that. I mean, but I just think UFC is just like insanely more entertaining. But For sure. Yeah. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's Staten Island growing up. You're with Shabon getting into trouble. That's mm -hmm. his name, Shabon. Yeah. With Shabon getting in trouble. Parents are working hard. They kind of like, is it fair to say, are like not all focused on you all the time? Like your dad between work, other siblings, other yeah, shit. Yeah, because I'm the baby. So, you know, they were just like over it. Like being, they were really strict with my brother and sister. Yeah, of course. And I was just, I would just not listen. If they were like, come home at 10 o'clock, I would just... I would like come home at 4 a.m. And then I was just like, you know what? I just not even going to go home. And I would just disappear. You know, yeah. I was terrible. I was just I'm just the worst. I when did it terrible. start? Was that old, like off rip? Like, no, it started in high school. Like in I middle think. school, were you like kind of shy? Like, I was a good kid. Yeah. 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 I was a good kid up until like 13, 14. And then it just turned completely. What do you think it was? Like in hindsight, if you had to be like objective, like do you think you were seeking like attention from your parents you wanted to be like you wanted to be parented because they were busy you know doing work no nah, i just wanted out of there i just realized i could get away with shit and i would just i realized i could lie good yeah and that's also what made me want to get into acting i was like able to lie really good and that's mm -hmm. basically what acting is you know right. you're just pretending to you know be somebody else or just do some shit that's not really you know so yeah, that's when I sort of like just uh, like I could take a little bit here. I could get away with this and also just wanted more out of life. You know, I saw how my father grew up. I saw like everybody around me, like they weren't really happy. You know, everybody in Staten Island was miserable. They're working their asses off and they're just not really happy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I was just like, I'm not, I'm not going to go this route. I'd rather... I remember Get Rich or Die Trying came out, you know? And I got that shit on a burn CD, like a bootleg yeah. disc, the you bootleg know? bootleg 50, bro. Yeah, yeah. It was just like a red Sharpie was like the songs written on it, you know? And I remember I brought that home. And I, that was just like, yeah, I'm just either going to fucking Get Rich or Die Trying. I'm either going to make it or I'm going to be dead or in jail, you know? Were you ever insecure about money, like as a young kid? Like going to school and kids would have shit and you'd be like, damn, I don't have that. Like, did you I was always like a hustler. I started, I had a paper out at 10. Mm -hmm. And you weren't even old enough to, like, I had to lie and I used my brother's name to be able to have the paper out. 
And I was making like 200 bucks when I was like 10, like 200 bucks mm -hmm. a week. And that was like a good start to my hustles, like you know? 200 bucks a week at 10 is like awesome. <laughs> yeah. What do you even buy when you're 10 years old? Like shoes and shit, a backpack? Candy. <laughs> Bro, you, you know? got a little sweet tooth. Dude. Yeah, big you time. Got, you got a little sweet tooth, baby. Yeah, just go nuts on candy. And then when I started cutting hair, I was making like a thousand a week maybe. And then I was just all sneakers, just yeah. fucking everything, sneakers. But the hustle comes from... Like seeing your parents hustle, obviously, like they work hard. Yeah. But was there any part of you that was like, well, they were by the book. They were doing things by the book right. always. Yeah, and I guess I they, was like, they I'm gonna workers. bend. I'm gonna bend the fucking rules. I'm gonna get away with what I can get away with. Yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna figure this shit out. And but from a young age, the desire to get money, probably like, where do you think that came from? Like seeing your parents arguing about money, like, possibly, yeah, it could have came from there. Yeah. It's and interesting it, to think about. And I was always obsessed with movies about like success stories, you know, like even like Scarface, Blow, Goodfellas, like all these like money making movies. But it doesn't even always have to be like a criminal one, like the social network, you know, like yeah. seeing people like really blow up and just make tons of money. Like that blinded by the light montage comes in and it's just like, where do we put the money, George? Like try the, uh, try the bathroom, yeah. you know, try the closet. He's like just fucking boxes of money. Yeah, I always wanted to. To just act like I was in those movies. Question. Where do you rank this movie in your top movies of all time? The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, Definitely out of Scorsese movies, I'd put it top three. But you for know? you in terms of movies of all time? All time movies? Is that a top five movie for you? Not top five, no. Okay, that might have been disrespectful. So I could I could have seen that being... Goodfellas like, is, for yeah, sure. I, mean, that's, I actually have not seen Goodfellas. What the fuck? Isn't that crazy? Did you go watch that tonight? Yeah, no, we might have to just cut this short. Just go watch Goodfellas together. I've seen it a hundred times. Not, I feel like it's on every Christmas. And you could just tune into that movie at any part of it, and then you're just like, all right, I'll watch the whole thing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I got to tune in. I got I to gotta watch Goodfellas. That's where I get my, like, inspo for scoring, like, the soundtrack that they use for those movies. Yeah, that's, like, where I get a lot of inspiration from. And how Even, I'm sorry, go ahead. Even when I started, like, making, like, making, like, videos and stuff, I was, like, heavily inspired. But yeah. how the fuck are you going to do shit like that on YouTube, you know? And how old are you when you see Goodfellas, like, Scarface, Blow, all that shit? Young, I was young, but Goodfellas was so close to like Staten Island, like the guys I was around, right? You know, so it, it seemed felt so normal. Familiar. Yeah, and then your brother shows it to you, or like you just find it through friends and shit. No, I yeah, you just find shit like that. It's just on TV always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're watching this, like the desire to get money, get rich or die trying is just like, all right, that's that's the name of the mm -hmm. game, and it's just like ticking inside you. Yeah. But now, if you start getting money... And I almost died and ended up in jail a lot of times. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. You So that's a dumb plan. Like, if you're listening to this, like, go for it. But, you know, well, yeah, do it yeah. the right way. Work hard. It, and might be, it. it might be Scarface. Like, he got rich, and then he also died trying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but that was a fictional tale, you know? Like, he was just... Are you sure? Tony Montana wasn't a real person, I don't think. You it's know? It's not a documentary. Are you positive? <laughs> well, Goodfellas is based on a true story. I didn't know that. Yeah, Goodfellas is. Um, Blow is based on a true story. George Young. Oh, yeah. He just passed away. But that's what I could get into because George Young, he wasn't a Scarface. He wasn't a Tony Montana where he's just like fucking kill everybody, just fucking smoke everybody, just machine guns. You know, like that's the movie shit. George was, he never killed anyone, mm. but he was responsible for, I think they said 85% of the cocaine from like the 80s to 90s. Like he brought That's over. That's crazy. I didn't realize it was that much. And never killed anyone. You know, he was yeah. uh, working with Pablo Escobar, who was murdering everybody. And I'm sure people died from, you know, his product that went out on the street. But him personally, no kills. Kind of got to respect the dude. I always say that's like, and I was actually talking to a friend of mine that brought this up to me. I just think it's such a good point. Like the most undervalued male quality or like masculine quality is like diplomacy. The ability to like, get shit done and achieve what you want to achieve without violence, without like mm -hmm. rubbing people with like, well, while, while making everyone kind of feel like everyone's taken care of, that is like such a quality of like a good leader. Yeah. I feel like is, is undervalued. People are like, dude, this guy will fuck anyone up. This guy's crazy. This guy's ruthless. Like he's a savage. Yeah. Those things like top priorities, like people love those. But I think like the best one is like you're, this dude, like young, like yeah. diplomatic. He's able to get what he needs to get done without burning all the bridges and like killing people himself. Yeah. 
you could get people to like you, you could get people to respect you, mm -hmm. fear you, you know. But George was pretty much just a savvy businessman, just put things together yeah. and made it work. He actually met, uh, it was a, a hairstylist, a guy who owned a hair salon, Derek For Real, who was the one who was like his connect to everyone because he knew everyone. Because when you cut hair, you know everybody. You meet everyone you have. You have to have like basically a podcast with them. You know, you have to have like a, a half hour That's to an so hour conversation with people. So you really build a bond with everybody you end up like having as a client. I would have cops that I would cut their hair when I'm 16, 17. And, you know, Christmas time comes around, they would all give you a PBA card. People don't know what this is outside of New York, but a PBA card is basically like not a get out of jail free card, but you could use it whenever you get pulled over. You show them, like, I have a cop in the family, like, I really respect the force, you know, just, you know, and they'll My be like, bad. all right, just go ahead. You're doing 120 and a 65, fucking just, you know, don't do it again. Like, I talk to your cousin, whatever, I talk to your, you, and you're good. That's cool. So, yeah. So you just, would get those from the cops. I'll get those, you know, you, anything you need, you can get in a barbershop, like a New York City barbershop. You can get fucking bootleg movies, fake Jordans, you know, drugs, anything. You can get all that in a barbershop. Yeah. I was even given Steiny some advice from how uh, the stuff that happened with Andrew, where oh, yeah. he got Andrew like tore him apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I loved watching that, but also like I, I felt like I could help Steiny because he just didn't get it, you know, like he's around these guys like Nelk and everything and they're a little younger and not really experienced in these situations. But I was like, Steiny, all you needed to do there was tell Andrew, suck my dick. <laughs> And you could have stopped that whole argument. You know? I don't know about that. If, if you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. The argument would have stopped. Yeah, but yeah. But it might yeah. have been more than an argument. Yeah, you know well, I was, I, that's, <laughs> but, but he wouldn't have had gotten clowned so much in that verbal argument. You know, maybe you could just stop that. But him constantly seeking approval, like, Andrew, why don't you like me? Why don't you like me? That's not going to make somebody like you. Yeah. If a girl dumps you, you can't hit her up and be like, hey, why don't you like me? You know, you can't seek that approval. Just say, suck my dick and keep it moving. You know, that's what I was trying to explain to Steiny. Like, that's how you get out of that situation. Yeah, Andrew might deck you in the face, <laughs> but at least you're not going to have TikToks going around yeah. of you just like, bro, like, I, I was a fan. Like, what? I just asked you if you've ever been heckled. Like, yeah, you know? I mean, that is like, a, a New York. I feel like New Yorkers are better at understanding how to like roll out of conflict. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Might make it way worse. But <laughs> yeah, but but it'll it'll either get better or worse. It's not going to be just mm -hmm. like a, a, a battering, you know? What I yeah, mean? yeah. Like, how do you get plugged in with the barbershop in the first place? Like, you go from these different hustles, paper routes. Like, did you ever sell candy at school? Nah. Did you know kids that did that? Yeah, but yeah. That was not for you. Nah. Not? There's nothing to it, you know. <laughs> the margins like, aren't there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What are you profiting fifty cents yeah, right. off? Of, what are we doing? No, nah, I. I I sold weed. I got into selling weed, but it was trash weed. It was I weed remember, first? It, weed was the first, uh, I guess, commodity I started selling. Yeah. Even before the even before barbershop? It came hand, hand in hand, you know? Gotcha. Like, you know, there's already drugs flowing around the barbershop. I remember the guy who owned my barbershop at the time that gave me a chance was a big, like, drug addict. He At the time, he's clean now. But, yeah, Albanian dude gave me a chance. But also that was could have had something to do with him being on so much drugs. But I I really like I was just cutting the sides of my hair. I was giving myself like the Pauly D, like that oh, those yeah. fucking <laughs> it's just so cringe seeing yeah. my my old high school photos. But yeah, that was what I was doing. That's how I got into it. I, I just knew how to do it. And I would be cutting my own hair using the clipper that my parents would use to mm. shave our dogs. I just found really? it and I like started taping myself up. And it looked good enough that when I was going into the shop to get the back done. My barber got offended. He was like, why Like, why are you, like, what are you going to somebody else to get half the cut and you come to me only for the back? I was like, no, I'm doing it myself. And he was like, oh, shit, for real? Like, that's, like, how I started out. Like, if you want to hang out and sweep up, I'll teach you. Like, I'll walk you through the steps and maybe you could be a barber one day. Mm. And within a month, I was, like, already cutting hair there. I was like, I started, I just, you're in high school. You know so many people at that time. You know, just you get one person, you get one person on the basketball team, then you got the whole basketball team. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I was busier than ever. It was so much easier for me to build my clientele because I was in school. You yeah, know, you were like 14, 15. Yeah, there's a thousand kids that you go to school with. Yeah. 500 of those are guys. And, you know? and you're taping your hair up just because, or like tapering your hair because you have an, like an interest in like being put together. You mm -hmm. want to look good. Like you're, yeah. you're someone that like even from an early age was like, yo, I'm not going to go to school looking like a fucking, you know, schlub. Yeah. Is that like a New York thing? Is that just like a you thing? 
Like, was there a, a, a moment where you're like, yo, I'm going to start, like, taking care of how I look. Like, I don't want to just, like, look schlubby. Yeah, I, w I wasn't really into anything else at the time. Like, I wasn't into fitness or, like, bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I just kind of knew hair. And I knew, like, I was interested in fashion mm -hmm. and, like, stuff like that. You know, fashion, music, hair, culture. Yeah. I was just all into that stuff. So it just came naturally. It was just something that I sort of just knew how to do. And I feel like that's the best barbers and artists are just people that kind of can pick up an instrument or something and just sort of like already have a little skill with it like naturally you know right or fighters you know you just fucking you know you either have you either have it or you don't you right. know so yeah that came very quick and then um maybe 16 17 18 full-time barber i had a route for my weed you know i had a, an extra flip phone that i was selling weed on too so i was doing good with money but it was just like there's no room to grow in Staten Island. You where, know? Does, where does the weed connect come from? Like, did you know dudes that were like run corners and shit? It wasn't really corners in Staten Island. Yeah, I guess it's more of like a city thing. Yeah, just like neighborhoods and stuff. Right. And you knew those guys? Yeah. Like through school or like through barbershop? Like Both. Gotcha. Yeah. And so you kind of get acquainted with them and then they are they like giving you like small jobs? Like, hey, An ounce. Like, like, can you deliver this or are they asking you to sell off rip? Well, I would even I would even just buy it up front. You know, it's an ounce, it's three hundred bucks, and you break it down, you make six hundred. Right. You know, so you, you make sell it in dime money. bags. Yeah, for Reggie probably just like trash exactly. It. Yeah, I yeah. was spraying it with cologne. No. You know. Yeah. Fucking, it was trash. That's I had so to make funny. it have some sort of smell, and back then nobody knew. That's so funny. Oh, this smells good. And then just like slaying the clients. Yeah. Like, so people come in the chair and just be like, "Yo, you smoke?" And they're like, "Oh yeah," and you'd be like, "Oh dude, when you come in, I got you." Yeah, you want me to explain drug dealing? To you? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's not hard, you know? And just everybody's looking for it. It's hard to find and word of mouth, yeah. you know? Same shit with haircuts. It's not like I was like dying, like struggling to build a business. It just worked out. It was just But easy. you wouldn't sell to people outside of the clientele. Like you weren't. I wasn't meeting strangers, no. Gotcha. You could do it. You could you survive just off. Yeah, you, you, know, had, you had people your hands you know. full just with people from school. Yeah. And then were you good at school at that time? No. Not, not at all. No, I, but because I was good at cutting hair and I had stuff going on for me outside, I remember I got put into this program for like stupid kids, like bad kids and stuff. And I had this guidance counselor, Ms. Perella. It was the Perella program. That's what it's called. Oh, really? I got put in that and she was the best. Like she she basically just said like, you're, I know you're going to be all right because you're already doing good. Like you already have a good head on your shoulders. You're working. That's a lot more than what other people are doing here. Mm -hmm. So like just fucking go to the classes, just show up, you know? And yeah, I was giving my teachers haircuts. They would come like outside of school, come to the barbershop, which is like a, illegal, but- Yeah, because you can't hang out with the students, right? There's like probably yeah, laws against it. Yeah, but my Spanish teacher would come in. Hey, oh, what's up, fucker? I didn't uh, fucking yeah, know. I it, didn't learn one word of Spanish, <laughs> but I would give him haircuts. <laughs> but he was a nut job. Like he was such a funny guy and it was such a wild class. Like kids would be smoking cigarettes in the class, like just going absolutely nuts. And it was like that movie um, with all the bad kids. What's that? Where they play Gangsta's Paradise? Oh, that song that that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. Coolio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember the movie though. But you know, what, it's like the white woman teacher, and they put her in. Oh, she like fixes all the kids. Freedom Riders. Freedom Riders. Yeah, 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 yeah I yeah. felt like that was like my classroom. What was that? It's like step across the line if you something something. I forgot. That there's like a line from that movie where they're like step off the line if you do this, and like no one stepped off or something. Do you remember this? Yeah, 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 yeah I think so. I gotta rewatch that one. But yeah, that, that's just what I picture when I look back at that classroom. And I remember he didn't even try to stop it. He was like, you know what? He just grabbed the chalk. He wrote ninety thousand dollars a year. And then he sat down. He said, this is my salary. Whether you, whether you guys learn or not, I still make this. I don't give a fuck. You want to go nowhere in life? Cool. I'm still getting paid. And I just thought that was so dope. Like, that stuck with me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that is insane. But it was a good salary, though, you know, for a teacher at the time. I, I feel like it, I just, in my mind, he's just Tony Montana. Like, that's, he's like, <laughs> yeah, hey, listen yeah. to the fuckheads. Fucking yeah. sniffing coke off the table. <laughs> yeah. You see this? That's all I'm getting. All yeah. Right? And yeah. so what what was the class's reaction? Everyone's just like, all right, so we're just not going to learn? <laughs> like, yeah. Damn, yeah. right? Yeah. Nobody learned a thing. So you just hung, hung out, smoked cigs, played dice. Mm -hmm. That was a day. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah. Were there other teachers that you liked? That was my favorite. He was my favorite teacher. Yeah, for um, obvious reasons. And I liked my guidance counselor a lot, Ms. Perella. Um, 
No, not, nobody was really memorable. You were like, ready um, to get out of there. Yeah, I was already. I already had plans. Were your parents stressed out? They, they're like, okay, Jeff's got like a lot of money, and you're like, oh, I'm just cutting a lot of hair. And they're like, all right. Like, did they know that you were like doing work or no? I got caught once bad. I got caught once really bad. They found your cologne. They found it. Yeah, they <laughs> found a lot of it <laughs> under my bed. And, oh really? Yeah, and I came home to it on the table. Like the box that I had was a safe, and it was busted open. My father busted it open, and of course, my go-to line is like, it's not mine, I was holding it for my friend, you know? And I was gonna see how far I could take that, you know? Which I know it sounds like ridiculous. This is 15 years ago now. I'm not gonna, you know, I was holding some of it for my friend. Stop it, Jeff. Why, what are you trying to prove right now, bro? You're, you're a drug dealer, dude. You went to prison. What are you there was some other stuff in there now. There was like fucking everything in this box. Cause I, I would just like, collect shit over the years and I just had everything that was illegal in this one spot and they happened to find that. I think I had like a bottle of steroids in there that I just had come across. <laughs> like just anything was in that box. Your and parents just, looked at you and they're like, all right, the steroids aren't yours. We get this. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Skinny Jeff's not doing yeah, steroids. We get yeah. it. Yeah, there was just so much shit in there, pills, everything. And um, I remember that actually I, some of it was for my friend that I was at uh, Six Flags with. Mm. So yeah, I was like... If you guys flush this, like that's what I think that you guys are planning on doing here. That's the solution. Then I'm just gonna owe a lot of money for it, and I'll just be in more trouble. And thankfully, they were like, you know what? Just tell the person to come here and come pick it up. And then the person just pulled up, I threw it in the car, and they left. Whoa. Yeah. They what, let was me... it? what was that phone call like to your boy? Like, dude. pissed. He was pissed at me that I involved him in that shit. But it was fucked up. It was bad. It was a bad time. You know, seeing all those drugs in the room with my parents. And because they're so like Catholic, straight edge, they were like just, you know, by the book people. You know, I just thought, like, I, I felt so bad, you know, that like I'm such a fuck up at that point. And for years, I was like, you know, for a large port of my, port, like, portion of my life, I just like felt like the black sheep. Like I just had to leave and go out and just figure it out for myself. And and then I came back to to visit and I saw one of my friends that I went to high school with and his dad, they were like doing construction next door. And he was like, yo, your dad is, what the fuck? Like your dad and my dad were best friends. Like they used to sell weed together. And I was like, what the fuck? What? And I was like, I, like, how do I bring this up, you know? And the kid was like, yeah, he's like, your, your grandma was like super cool, you know, like she just let like him and like your uncle like just like sell it right out of the house and stuff. And I was like, no fucking way, no fucking way. So finally I get a, a like, I get an opportunity to talk to my dad about this. And I was like, so like I was talking to Albert and he was like telling me about like when you were a kid and like, you know, you used to be doing this stuff. And like, he said that you had a cool mom and like, you, you let you get away with this stuff. And he got so mad. He was like, you think that makes a cool mom? Like, you think that's cool? Like a mom that didn't care? Like what you have is a cool mom, mo like a mother that cares about you, wants you to do the right thing. And I just felt like I got checked big time. And he said like, it wasn't him, it was my uncle, which I do have a, one uncle that's like still smoking weed. He has like a raspy voice to this day. He's like, hey, Dennis, you know, the fuck, you see the horses? <laughs> so I believe that it was more him than my dad, but it was just funny that like, I was like, oh shit, you fucking did this shit too, you know? How crazy. Yeah. And then you without even knowing it are just like going into it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like just falling into like the family business type shit. Without yeah. Even knowing that yeah. that's a part of it. Yeah. That's so crazy. It was, I wouldn't say family business. No, of course not. But, you But know. like, you got to think like, okay, your dad's doing this kind of shit. And then he hides it from you and he thinks that he's like, you know what? I got my kids off that path. They're never going to do it. You know, I had to do it because of whatever, whatever. My kids aren't going to have to. Yeah. And then no matter how hard you try, like your kids are going to, mm -hmm. your kids are going to raise hell. I kind of feel like I wish they were more like open with me when I was younger, maybe, you know, cause maybe it would have, uh, like I, I could have been like, all right, they are just like me, you know, mm -hmm. and they they do have this life experience and they are like telling me from their own personal experiences, not just like being like, oh, we are, we just don't accept any of this shit being in the house at 10 o'clock, yeah. you know? 
100 percent. i know that feeling i can understand from your parents perspective they're probably like we don't want to discuss this and we don't want to open that door because if we make it seem like we did it then we don't have any grounds to say that he can't do it and so yeah. it's better just to like ignore it completely but in my opinion unfortunately the, the opposite happens is yeah. that the kids think my parents don't get me they don't understand me they don't know what i'm going through they don't know the world that i'm living in so I can't even talk to them about what I'm going through. So I'm just going to figure this out myself. And then mm -hmm. that's when you start making dumb mistakes because you don't have someone else to talk to. Mm -hmm. Like I completely, I get both positions. And yeah. that's the insidious nature of like trying to button up things that should be talked about. Like if my yeah. kids ask me like, you know, even when they're young, like dad, like did you ever smoke weed? I'll be like, yeah, I smoked weed. Yeah. You know, I'll just be honest. I'll be like, yeah, I, I did do that. Yeah. Like if they ask me things that, you know, if, I think if they're old enough to ask, like they're probably old enough to hear some of the answer. I don't need to go into detail about everything, but like generally speaking, I'm not going to like hide a bunch of stuff from my kids about like my life. Because mm -hmm. I think it's important for them to know that, yo, your dad lived a real life. He made mistakes. You know what our problem is though? It's a this. Erectile dysfunction. It's this. It's, it's We've recorded ourselves telling, should we just rat on ourselves every day? We just go on podcasts snitch. and we snitch. just, we this stuff is going to live on the internet. You know, we're going to have an Good. archive of stuff that Good. like, even if you did want to play, take that route that my parents did, mm -hmm. you can't, you'll just, they'll just but look like on the that. internet. I like being married to a life of honesty and mm -hmm. that by having a public ledger of who you are and who you were, it forces you to live up to who you say you are. You know what I mean? Yeah, for like, sure. Sam yeah. Harris has this idea. Like, I forget exactly how he phrased it. I listened to this podcast a while ago. But like, by committing to a life of truthfulness and being like, I'm not going to lie and being on public record being like, I'm not going to be a liar, you then are forced to uphold that standard that you've set for yourself. Yeah. So like, I like that I can't bullshit with my kids. Yeah. And if my kids pull up something, maybe I say on a podcast that I regret 20 years later, which is almost certainly going to happen. I'm going to regret things. And my kids go, yo, dad, why'd you say this? Why'd you say this about this person? Should you have said that? I can look at them and be like, hey, I made a mistake. I honestly should not have done that. Yeah. And I hope that you learn from me because my kids will be me mm -hmm. in the way that I will be my dad and my dad will be his dad. Like they're, these epigenetics are real. Like the genetic history of like who we become and who our children will be, like a, a lot of it is, is nature, a lot of it is nurture. So that being said, like, I'm grateful that I get to show my kids like, yo, these are mistakes that I made. You can see them on record and I really hope that you learn from them. And if mm -hmm. you have to experience them yourself to like grow from them, that's that's cool too. Like some people got to do both. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm okay with the public ledger. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, well, we don't have a choice either way. You know, yeah. it's- You can it, pull it out. You can delete it. Fuck You can no. run from it. You can run from who you are. No, you can't. No, not me. I got, <laughs> I got videos out there that I can never pull down. Yeah, and mug shots, you know? Yeah. No, I, there's no escaping it for me, so I got to be brutally honest with my kids, you know? But how cool is that, though? Yeah, no, it'll be cool. That you yeah. don't have the option. Yeah, yeah. You know Super I mean? cool, yeah. Like, I think I think that's good to look forward to. I'm, I'm excited to talk to my kids about, about everything, about the mistakes I made, the cool shit I've done. Mm -hmm. I would love for them to see a full picture of who their dad is. Yeah. Because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of people go their life without ever really knowing who their parents are. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. And I just feel like over the past, like probably since I like cleaned up my act and, you know, I've, I've been a lot more honest and like transparent online, they've learned a lot more about me because they like my mom will put on all the shit. My dad doesn't really give a fuck. He just has to listen to it in the background. But, you know, I feel like that sort of brought us a lot closer together, you know, because I have like they hear me tell all these stories that yeah. I always hid from them. You know, I'm yeah. sure they just learned a bunch on this episode. But yeah, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's a weird thing, man. It's weird. Do you have any kids? No. Are you planning on anytime soon? Yeah, I'd have kids. Well, you got married super young. 23, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I mean, I've, I'd have kids now. I'm down for it. Yeah. I got to wait for my girl to like finish school. She's in, she's like finishing up midwifery school right now to be a midwife. Mm -hmm. But uh, when she's done with that, I'm like, yeah, I'm down. I don't, I don't know. I, like my parents had kids when they were super young. So yeah, the idea of like, you know, have your whole life figured out, make all the money you can, get everything perfect, and then have kids never was in my plan. That never really made sense to me. Yeah. I, really, I guess that's sort of the, what I think about, you know, like I want to have uh, things quiet down a little mm -hmm. bit. And yeah, but. And that could be good for you. Again, I think everyone's got to do their, their own thing, whatever makes sense for them. But for me, like, yeah, I don't, I'm excited for my kids to like see me hustle and like try to figure things out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like something that Patrick Bet David said to us on the pod is like, uh, do you know Patrick Bet David? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said something that like, you know, his parents never told him anything. He just observed. 
Mm -hmm. and he saw his parents work hard as fuck Mm -hmm. and that informed and like ingrained in him what hard work was his parents weren't like hey i used to work really hard but now i'm like retired so i could take care of you but like i was working hard you got to show them what the, that example is yeah so for me i'm like yo i'll work hard also i don't think a lot of money for kids is actually a good thing yeah <laughs> I of mean? course like so i'm like if my kids are middle class for like the first 10 years of their life great Mm-hmm. <laughs> like that's, Caught him off at ten. Like, fuck it, dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. hit the fucking bricks, dude. Start selling weed or whatever. Like, yeah, get out there, figure you know it out. I mean? Get some life experience. Yeah, grow up. Nah, but for real, I'm like, I don't know. I don't. I think I, my quote I was like is like the two worst things to happen to a kid is to get everything they want and to get nothing they want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like somewhere in the middle, I think is okay. Yeah. Do you think you'll have kids? What's up, guys? We're going to take a break really quick because you need to be having the best sex of your life. And the way you're going to do that is with the good old boys over at Blue Chew. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Blue Chew is an amazing product, all right? Here's what you do. You go to bluechew.com. You go through one of their licensed medical providers, and they will send you a little package in the mail. And when that package arrives, your package arrives. That's right. You take the chewable tablet, and basically... It has all the same ingredients, such as like Viagra, Cialis, all these things, but it's the chew, baby. All in one cute little chewable tablet. You pop it in, and it makes you feel great. Gives you that stiffness, that firmness. Gives you that woody. You know what I'm saying? It makes you pitch that tent like the tent I'm in right now. One time I used it, actually, while we were camping. We didn't have anywhere to sleep, so I popped a blue chew, and everyone just slept inside my pants. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? My dad was pissed. But anyway, look. Blue Chew is the one. If you are looking to have the best sex you ever had, this is the way to do it. If you are one of these people that's like, ah, I don't need it. You don't know what you need until you try it. You know what I'm saying? Confidence is sexy. You know how you get confidence? Got to keep a little chew in your back pocket. So if you're interested in having the best sex, you're like, maybe you're one of these people that, you know, you're like, yeah, you know what? I'm actually okay having mediocre sex. I'm actually okay, you know, being a little nervous in the bedroom. That, that's fine. You can be that guy. But if you want to be one of these people that takes control, takes the reins, you go to bluechew.com. That's B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Chew it and do it, baby. And what I want you to do is use the promo code GAGNON, G-A-G-N-O-N, and you're going to be trying Blue Chew for free. Yeah. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. That's it. You pay for shipping, you get the product for free. I mean, there's no real better way to do that. It's only fair. Fair is fair. You pay the shipping, product's free. That's bluechew.com, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W. Dot com promo code gagnon g a g n o n receive your first month for free you can check out all the details for important safety information and we thank blue chew for sponsoring this wonderful program now let's get back to the show of course yeah i would like to mm-hmm. probably um like i stress out about it because i'm 33 years old now like i i should be you know probably but also don't say should yeah don't say should say could I, yeah, I could be. Well, you know, I feel like I should just off like, you know, my brother and sister both had kids before they were my, like around my age now or, you know, now they're, my nieces are getting like a little older. They're like six, seven years old. So I feel like, you know, I need to get around to that, but I also got to find the partner for that. Yeah. And how cool are your nieces though? Yeah. It's, it's, the it's so cool right? that I get to just pop in and like, you know, it's like for the holidays and shit. And then, cause it does get to a point where like, they don't stop. Like I need to be like uploading a podcast or posting a tweet or something, <laughs> just pulling my arm down and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, all right, that's enough. You yeah, know, I gotta yeah. get out of here. Yeah. But no, it's cool. I definitely got to do it. No, yeah, that's going to be dope. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Okay. So but you know what gets me, you know what actually recently um, made me feel better? Andrew, he just turned 40, mm-hmm. you know, and now I feel like he's at that point where he's about to do all that and he seems super happy. Yeah. And it's like a very... It's a very inspiring like career. Like he, I could see myself being happy with that route. It's not. There's not many people on social media that I could look at and be like, "I want that life," you yeah. know, because everybody's fucked up in this business. Like Casey Neistat, I look at him like an inspiration. Mm-hmm. You know, it's cool. I always, I, I feel like shit when I don't have people that I can get inspired by, and I fall into places where like I don't. If I don't have anybody in my life that's inspiring me, then you're in a bad spot. Yeah, you know. So when Andrew posted that he's forty, I was like, oh fuck, this guy turned forty now. Yeah. Like I got seven years. You yeah, know, man. it just made me feel like I got I got some more time. No, he, I don't know if I'll wait that long, but he's crushing it right now. Right, like he, he just he blew it. up so much over the past few years, and he just looks like so happy going to see you guys live, and you all like crushed it. And I feel like you guys are really doing something. That's real. It's huge, and you guys found your 
your rhythm like it's just i it, appreciate that man yeah thank you for saying that I you mean, have a great crew you it, know it is that is the coolest thing i mean like even beyond like the professional stuff like there's a lot of people that blow up but like for andrew the thing that is so cool for me to see is like the way that he's just like transformed personally you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he has like when i met him he was just like the coolest dude but like you know it, like it was he was in a different stage in his life and now he's you know married did he like, even know his wife at the time when you met him i think when i met him he, they were like just starting to date or like it was like right around that time oh, yeah. but like now he's like married like he's just in this point in his life where it's so cool to see and then the way he's built up the team like all the guys in the podcast all the guys in the studio like it is a family like it's a yeah. real community like those are all the people i hang with like that is like yeah. my circle and the way that he's built it up and has been like a leader in that group is like the coolest thing and mm -hmm. that to me is i don't know that is like th like the most exceptional thing in my opinion just because like that is like I don't know, that's the essence of life. You know what I mean? Like to be with people you really care about and like build family, all that stuff. I just think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And it can happen at any point. You know what I mean? If you're 40, it's okay if it hasn't happened yet. And if you're 50, it's okay if it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, yeah. Like the times where I had the most money and I was like kind of just like, all right, I, I got freedom now, financial freedom. I could kind of just chill out. I don't really need anybody. And you start to be like, alone more and like those are the times i was the least happy that's what i'm saying bro the achievements are awesome I, of course i don't think it's you shouldn't discount the achievements mm -hmm. but i don't know like we fight so hard for a legacy when ultimately in my opinion like our kids will be our greatest legacy yeah you know what i mean like yeah i, I like I, this this podcast is fun and i really enjoyed doing it but like ultimately like the time i invest in my children and like the impact that they'll make on the world and on people i think will be greater than like any piece of content, any comedy special. As long like, as they're not rich, you can't be giving them all that money. I'm saying, a couple dude. Jaden Smiths that I'm, say some cringe <laughs> things that go viral. And never, you know, I'm running the Shaq game, dude. I'm just like, you're not getting none of this. I just want to talk about the political and economic <laughs> state of the world right now. Like, what are you talking about? You grew up with billions of dollars, you know? Don't try and be deep. At the same time, though, I'm like, bro, don't put a microphone in front of me when I'm 16. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, if you true. put a microphone in front of me when I'm 16, bro, yeah, I should would have been. Suck my dick, suck my dick. That's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what you would have said. Just in the Mercedes, just call fights. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. thank God I don't have to remember any of that. Like, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, but, for real. So your parents are like a little stressed out. You're, you're slinging drugs. They find the work. Mm -hmm. Does that deter you at all? No. Not I even. I just got to realize I got to get out of here. I got to move out. Because as soon as you can move out, then you can start actually making real money. Yeah. I moved out at 17. I moved out. Um, I moved in with another barber that worked next to me, my boy Nick. He was a nut job, head to toe, covered in tattoos. Terrible influence on me. Like such, he's like one of my best friends. Knows everything about everything. Like would be a perfect podcaster. He would just be rambling in the barbershop. Somebody brings something up over in my chair. He'll just chime in with facts about it. You know, like yeah. he, half of it was bullshit, but... You know, like he was just, it was just like, I learned a lot from him. I took a lot away from him. Like a lot of the, hopefully I like to think the good things that I took away probably did take some bad habits from him too. But yeah. Al Albanian moved, dude? No, no, no. He was Italian. Okay. Um, rode motorcycles, like had like a 350Z, like all done up. Like uh, he was into cars, drag racing and shit. That's right. Um, but yeah, he, uh. He took me in, I moved in with him, and then I just continued doing what I was doing then. Drove him nuts for, you know, a few months, and then I ended up moving to Miami. I think I tried to move back home, and then my dad was like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, no, really? you chose to leave. You're good. Like, that's, you're done. So you, yeah. you, like, with the parents, it was like a little icy for a little. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They were pissed. Hell yeah. And you were pissed at them, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And were, you, were your siblings talking to you? Uh, I didn't get along with my brother. Up until like when he got married um, and had kids and stuff. But that's because we fought bad. Like he's four years older than me. So that like 16 year old fighting a 12 year old yeah. is is bad. But then my sister would step in and she'd have my back. So I was, I was really close with my sister. I, I just got probably over the past like seven years, I got closer with my brother again. That's cool. Yeah. We all have this app Strava. Yeah, you know yeah, Strava? Yeah. yeah, of course. So we all run, and my dad's older now, so he cycles. And that's like our own, like only form of like social media where we like all Bro, connect on How it. cool is that? Like they honestly, shout out to Strava. Like they built an app that is a social network for fitness. Yeah, they gamified like fitness. It's great. I If I leave my house for a run without my watch, what, or if I point? go to the gym, like yeah, I'm Worthless. fucking. 
Might as well not do it. Uh huh. I know. I'll saying? go home and get it. You know? <laughs> yeah, literally. I've done that before. Yeah. Like if I like I really I like I got my Apple Watch. I like to close my rings and shit. Yeah. So like, and again, it's, what's close the ring? Is that like sleep and stuff? Uh, it's make like, sure you get the. It's not sleep, but it's like three other rings. I don't even remember. I just want to close them. It's like it's like walking, exercise, and then okay. that's another thing. It's very easy to close them. Yeah. But, it's a similar thing where like it keeps you connected with other people that are also doing it. Yeah. And so like you do challenges with other people. So like me and my friends, brother-in-law, whatever, like we'll do ring challenges together. So mm -hmm. like every time you work out, it sends them a message like, yo, Mark just worked out for an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, you better believe I'm fucking waking up and working out if someone, uh -huh. you know what I mean? Like, Especially awesome. if you have that competitive aspect and you like, my brother and I, we talk a lot about running and he's like a little bit faster than me. Like he always will mm. have like, he's done he's done marathons and he was tracking me during during the race and he saw that I was on track to do like 3.30 in, in the last marathon that he did last week and he was like getting pissed off because he's like now I got to go out and sign up for another one and beat 3.30 yeah. but then I got I hit a wall at 20 and I was like you know and he was probably like yeah cramping up oh yeah everything yeah it's just falling apart <clears throat> I didn't train for 26 miles I trained for like you know thir if it was 13 I would have crushed it I broke my half marathon record in the marathon. Like That's I was cool. on track. Like I got a little notification on my watch. Like you just set a new PR on the half marathon. I'm like, yo, I'm going to kill yeah, this shit. Yeah, what yeah. got into me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just people screaming like the energy Bro, out there. I love it. I think I was telling you when we yeah, were Yeah, you uh, did. And that stuck with me what you said. Cause I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Cause we had just met. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, man, I heard you doing the marathon. Like that's, it's so like the energy out there is so good. Like I, sometimes I'll just go out there and I'll just watch and like I start crying. Yeah. I'm like, we, you don't even go run it and you're out no. there crying. I, I get like, weepy, what are you talking bro. about? I get you, weepy. But now I feel what you were saying. Yeah. Like I was so ready to like make fun of you for that. Like just roast you. Like what are you, you all emotional? <laughs> why cry? didn't you? Watch why why didn't you make fun of me? <laughs> you're watching people run and crying. You're soft. But I get it. Like the way people come together in New York City yeah. where it's always people trying to kill each other. And they're always just fighting, mad at each Busy, other, got shit to do. cursing each other out. And then you just see all of these people coming out. Like I saw people with, you know, Palestine flags and Israeli flags like next to each other. And I think Casey got a video of like two two guys together. That's dope. And it was just like, it's crazy to see people come together. Like I thought seeing that shit, like, oh no, a fucking terrorist attack's gonna happen out yeah, of here. Yeah, it's about to buck off. Yeah, but no, it's just everybody's so positive. They're all cheering you on and you stop for a second. I would, I would like, I hate to have to stop and walk, you know? And of course, the second I stop, I see like a fan with a sign and I'm just like, ah, oh, I let them down. I'm such a loser, you know? But, but how cool is that though? Like, I don't know. There, I had a behavioral scientist on, this dude, Dan Levy. He was awesome. But he said this thing that the greatest way for two human beings to come together, to form like actual bonds, like neurologically, is to do hard work together. Yeah. It is the greatest way for two people to get close. Like yeah. we could talk for three hours and we would have some sort of familiarity. Mm -hmm. If we worked out for 30 minutes, if we went for a 20 minute run, we would be closer than if we talked. hundred percent. Like, yeah. And now you're in this experience with 60,000 people all running, all suffering at the same time in this one city with all these people supporting you. I mean, bro, that shit is beautiful. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Even training like with Casey, you know, and I trained with Cody Co. Like I just did a couple long runs, like going into it. Yeah. And it's just such a special bond. And people you train with in MMA, like jiu-jitsu and stuff. Think about that. Such a good bond that you have. Like even, like you met Dylan, um, mm -hmm. Dennis, right? Mm -hmm. He is easy to not like, you know, especially like the shit that he does. On the internet. Yeah. You yeah. Him on, in person? on the internet. It, I met him in person. I hung out with him in person. He is... Yeah, like I was friends with him I was like, before, like, uh, you know, going on the impulsive team and shit like that. Like we hung out in mm -hmm. LA, came out there and we met up, we went and did like cryotherapy and shit. Um, but in person, he's very likable. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I yeah, that was tough to navigate when the, all that shit was going on, you know, cause I'm like talking to Dylan and DMs. He, I'm like training and he's like, yo, I'm proud of you doing jujitsu, like come train. And yeah, that's like, you know, like you can, I'm sure like him and Connor, like going through all that training together. That's why they're so tight, you right. know? It's it's like next level shit. And then imagine you're training with a dude, sparring with them, like making each other better. And then you got to actually mm -hmm. fight. Yeah. You got to actually get in that oh, ring. Oh, fight that guy? Yeah. You, you fight a friend? There's, there's pay-per-view buys on the line for you yeah. guys to go fight each other, like in a UFC fight. Like there's these guys that are in the same camp, they're out of the same gym, and now they're competing against each other trying to kill each other yeah that is crazy in the brain like you see these dudes after fights and i remember before really understanding like seeing a dude like knock a guy out and then go hug him and like cry yeah. 
And you're like, like Justin Gaethje and uh, Cowboy, because yeah. they were boys, and and then he knocked him out, and he was hitting him, and, and he's like looking at the ref, like, "Are you gonna fucking stop this?" And he's like, "Still got to hit his boy more." And then after, he's like, "What the fuck?" He got all mad at the ref. He's like, "You made me fucking hit my." That and shit he, is raw. Yeah, that is a powerful feeling. And you watch, yeah. it and you're like, "Damn, this is beautiful." And if you understand the subtext, you understand what's behind that. It's like, dude, there's like primal energy going on right mm -hmm. now. I just, I don't know. I think it's like such a beautiful thing. And the ability to do that with people is, is awesome. To suffer with other people, I don't know. That's like the essence of humanity. Yeah, yeah I started doing jujitsu like a couple months before I started training for the marathon. I had to put it on hold, but I was loving it, like the bond I would have with these guys. And Wiz Khalifa trains there. Oh, yeah. And I know Wiz back from when I used to cut hair. I was cutting Amber Rose's hair and Mac and all those guys. And then they just like started dating and then they took me on tour and I would go around like giving them haircuts on tour. And this was over 10 years ago. So I haven't seen Wiz since. I don't even know if he would remember me. And he comes into the gym and they like, I see him and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, you know, he's like, damn, I like, yo, I haven't seen you since like before I had my kid, like what's going on? And we just start rolling together. And now we're like, right, we just see each other 10 years later and we start choking each other, we're fighting. Beautiful. I get him in a choke and you hear him like laugh. He's like, ah, ah, and you just hear like an ad lib <laughs> through the whole gym. It just sounds like a song's playing and stuff. Uh, it's just so you funny. You know what it is? Like that's uh -huh. so fire. He caught me in a choke. He got me to tap, you know, like it's, it. yeah, you really fucking bond doing that shit. And he's good. He's taking it very serious and that respect for the, you know, like you're really trying to make each other better, you know? Yeah, he and seems locked properly. in with it. That's really cool. Big time, yeah. I'm a huge Wiz fan. That is like, like that was the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. 2012, 2013, like black and yellow drops, and you're like, mm -hmm. bro, this is, this is it. Yeah, I got to see him, like how you see like Andrew mm -hmm. blowing up. Like the, that's how I was with them when they were oh, like really? at their first stage. I gave Big Sean a haircut when he had 5,000 followers crazy that is wild he just put out a tweet he was like i'm in miami i'm doing a music video and i need somebody to cut my hair and then they hit me up and they're like yeah kanye just signed this guy and i was like the fuck it's not fucking kanye didn't sign this guy and then sure enough like you know look at him he blows up within that year and he, he was any, a part of that tour too he it was, had no it songs was, out at the time not that i know of not not that i knew of wow. none of them but yeah it was big sean was khalifa Wiz was the headliner. Um, Big Sean was, I think, uh, second. And then I think Mac was the opener at the time. Dude, what a tour. That's yeah. a show. Yeah, it was nuts. And how long were you on the road with them for? Just like a month or two, That's you know. Cool. But I, I lived in Miami, so everybody would come to Miami. So I would always like meet up with everyone. Everybody would come into town and I would cut their hair and stuff. Yeah. So, so did just, you graduate high school? I did, yeah. But it was just because like... On the Perella program. You know? Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah. So she like pushed you out the mm -hmm. door, just like, all right, you finished, you're good. Yeah. And then did, was college even on the table at all? I went, I tried going, but I was just like, I did one semester and I wasn't like doing college for the right reasons. I was just, you know, going just to go. Where, where'd you Make go? my parents happy and stuff. CSI. Where, where's College that? of Staten Island. College of Stupid Idiots. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah, fine. Yeah, it was fucking terrible. I was cheating, I was just copying homework, paying people to do shit. I was like, this isn't, there's no point. You know, I'm not even going to use this yeah. in life. So, you know, and then, I just go out and keep doing what I was doing. Why Miami? Um, It was close enough, and I knew people there. I would go on vacation there. Mm -hmm. I, I would just go down there with my boys, and we would have fun. And I remember seeing this barber shop that was opening up. It was called Hall of Fame Barbershop and it had like all these athletes and celebrities on the, like when it was like under construction and they had like those papers up on it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, damn, this looks sick. And I saw this truck outside of it. There was like a bus that had all the decals on it, same shit. And I'm looking at it like just in awe. And then the door opens and these people walk out. One of them was the owner. And I was like, yo, I'm a barber. I live in New York. Like I'm trying to move down here. I would love to work here. And he's like, yeah, yeah, come down. And we'll, we'll, like, we'll talk. So I took that as like, oh shit, this guy's got, just gave me a job, you know. So I moved, I moved down there and like committed, and I ended up being the first barber in like the first chair in that shop. I don't know how like that even. I like got really lucky there, you know, because it was like their new flagship shop. Mm. It was completely decked out like this. They put a lot of money into this place. There were TVs in the mirror, which was like a big deal back then, and I was just like so hyped to work there. And then that's how I met a lot of people. I remember. Amber Rose just came walking in and she was like, I want you to shave my sister's head. And I was like, 
I was like, you look like Kanye West's girlfriend. She was like, sweetie, I am Kanye West's girlfriend. And I was like so fucking nervous. That was like one of the first celebrity like interactions I had. Besides like Staten Island celebrities. Because we would have like Wu-Tang come to our barbershop and stuff. Like Raekwon would come in there. But that just felt like normal, you know? Like this right. was like the first time. It's also a little different there. when it's like, no disrespect, like your generation versus like the generation before. You. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Wu-Tang is our legends. But for you as like, you know, a 20 something year old kid, mm -hmm. you're like, oh yeah, those are like the OGs. But yeah. now you're hanging with like Kanye's girl. Big, huge, I was a massive Kanye fan. At the height of his fan. career, like that's, yeah. that's a different level. And she was like just beautiful in person. And she yeah, was like, I just want you to shave. And bad. the girl had hair your length and she just wanted me to shave it. And so uh, this is a moment. Yeah. And they, uh, we like start drinking there. They're like, can you get us Hennessy? Cause the girl's like scared to shave her head. So they start drinking and we're all having a good time. And I shaved her head and I was like holding the hair. I remember I have a picture where I was like, I was like my face is like all red and I'm like with them and holding the hair. And then I ended up dating that girl. Really? Yeah. I ended up dating the girl. I shaved her head for like, for like a year. Amber Rose's actual sister or like her friend? No, they were just like, they looked alike and they were just like best friends. So yeah, at the time it was, it was cool. It was, That's kind of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was all right. She ended up cheating on me when no. I got arrested in, in Miami. No. Yeah, so it ended bad. I have a bad taste in my mouth. But she was dope. I learned a lot. You learn a lot from dating like an older girl yeah, that's or like a living with a woman. That's a woman. You, yeah. were, you were a boy at the time. Oh, and, yeah, and yeah. And you were dating a woman. Fucking didn't, didn't even know how to do dishes and shit back then, you know? Fuck like you dishes, really, you, Boy, yeah. Tell me about the real shit. How, how was it, my boy? <laughs> what was, how was it? Oh, I think it was, best, it was the best years of my life. Like I felt it. Well, not really. Best minutes. Not. Best minutes. Also, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it was, I remember thinking like that the, like I was scared to make the move. And then there, I had a moment, like I remember the moment, I was like, this was the best decision I ever made within like a month. And, Cause I was sacrificing a lot. I had built that whole clientele there at a business, fucking side businesses, you know? And I was gonna give all that up. I was gonna stop selling, doing anything illegal. And I was gonna just become strictly, like just try to blow up in this career. I remember Twitter had just kind of come out. So that was like my only form of social media, like Facebook a little bit, but you could only have like 5,000 friends. So it wasn't really like you're reaching everyone. Yeah. But Twitter was a way to like, you know, and of course like the Tumblr and shit, you yeah, know? Yeah. So that's what I was doing to try to build the brand. And I was doing videos for YouTube and Twitter, but it was like just haircuts with like a, a song in the background. Let's mm -hmm. say I was like cutting Big Sean's hair, I put his song in the background and just have it be like a montage. And then that was like kind of when I was starting the barbershop show. I didn't realize it at the time, but yeah, that was like, the beginning of it was there know? barbershop content at that time like there's more now on tiktok but at the time now there's tons of it yeah no there wasn't it wasn't really like anything that you could watch it was like it was hard to even find good barbers back then mm -hmm. you know you would think that like only in new york you get a good fade yeah you know and i mean that's a scary move to go from staten island where mm -hmm. you know everyone that's your whole world mm -hmm. other than a couple vacations out of the city yeah to now getting on a plane at like 17 18 yeah and just leaving like yeah, I remember I sold all my shit um, and I just moved in with somebody. I didn't even really know the guy that good, but I just like moved in with him and just built up from there. What did you tell your roommate when you're like, yo, by the way, I'm moving to Miami? He, he's like, yeah, good luck. You're going to fucking come right back, you know? That's how every, like how you said before, like, you know, people on Staten Island, like, you're not going to do shit, you know? Like nobody believed I was going to do anything. Did that charge you up? Hell yeah, it still does to this day. I really? get motivated you still feel by it? It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, people hating, you know, they want to talk shit because people will still put you down even today, like, oh, you're an influencer, you fucking, you know. But no, I'm doing it I'm doing everything I set out, like said I was gonna do. I'm doing it. Yeah. You know? Did you done it all? I've done it. Like I've made I've I had a point where like I felt unmotivated because I like accomplished the goals that I wanted. I just wanted to get like a million subscribers to say I was a YouTuber and get that gold plaque mm -hmm. and like won a streamy award. And I was like, I fucking did it all. Now what? You know, but then I had to get like re-motivated by like competition and people trying to put me down mm -hmm. and like banish me or like yeah. hate on my shit. Cody so, Cole beating you in the marathon. Yeah, now yeah. I'm going to fucking train. Now so I'm going to do my own. He bodied you. That's so crazy. I know. Cody got me fucking. And I, was, I was watching that. I thought you were going to beat him for sure, but no, he fucking really destroyed you. I know. That fucking nerd with his nutrition <laughs> and coach, his fucking coach. He was making fun of me. He's like, you don't take gels? And I was like, I'm never be caught dead with one of those. 
And then I realized that Mile that 20. shit, yeah, Mile that's 20. why you know he saying? takes him. Jelly would be nice. And he puts in the work like properly. Like he's focused on that type of endurance training. Yeah. I don't want to do that really because yeah. it's bad for you. But you know, if there was like, if people thought like the New York City half marathon was cool, then it would be way better. But it's not. Nobody gives a fuck about no. a half marathon. No, no, no. I've never been like, excited about reading half a book. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You got to do the full I've shit. I've never watched half a TV show. I've been like, guys, you seen this show? Yeah, yeah. I guess it's, yeah, that, that makes sense. But no, <laughs> Cody's crushing it. And I feel like yeah. he's very similar to me where like, um, not really, we're polar opposites. Yeah, he's like a comes, much better athlete. But like, yeah. other than that. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you guys, it. You guys are, <laughs> no, I'm saying you're similar. You know, other than I'm him. getting on steroids. That's it. <laughs> I'm going back. Going back to the safe. Uh -huh. Dad, where are the roids? Where was that? <laughs> <laughs> Under my bed. Let me get them. Yeah. No, but I, I, yeah, Cody, again, he's like, you know, Strava and shit. I'm seeing his runs and I'm seeing all that. But yeah, like you said, with the watch, man, like I'm now monitoring my sleep. Yeah. And it's, it's sleep is so important. Recovery is so important, not yeah. even just for training. Like my brain, when it comes to podcasting, if I don't get REM sleep, I realize how stupid I am that day. Bro. Can't remember shit. I, I really try to build my life around the sleep. I mean, you spend 26 years of your life sleeping, like a huge chunk of it. I yeah. spend, I spend a lot of money on like a mattress. I spend money on pillows. I spend mm -hmm. money on like all, anything related to my sleep, I take extremely seriously. Yeah. It affects how well I perform. It affects how good the jokes are that I write. A hundred percent. It affects how well I can converse and sort of, you know, dialogue. Like everything is predicated on how well you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. And for you, you, like an idea pops into your head, that's money, you know? Literally, yeah, yeah, Like yeah. you just, that, where does it even come from? You know, it comes from having good sleep. Like I look at food the same way. Like before we did this pod, I was like, I need a carb. I need like a medium length, you know, energy device that I can just like have to like mm -hmm. give me some stamina. So yeah. I'm like, yo, I got to get some type of carbon right before. Mm -hmm. Like I start the day. Like I really try to like. I got to do more of that because I'm bad with nutrition. Bro, but, like that is that is you. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you are not you. You are, you know, the sum of what Food. you eat. You know what I'm saying? So like the shit you put into you is you. Those mm -hmm. are the ideas you have. I'm just sour straws. That's what I'm built up Bro, of. you've been having so many sour straw kind of ideas lately. You notice that? I got to stop. I got to change. <laughs> yeah, I got to change it up. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Maybe some carrots. Maybe a carrot could be good. It's good for your eyes. Or yeah. is that a myth? The vision. They yeah, probably not say, good for you. Probably good for one grow, of your eyes. It grows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Bro, you I'll should eat so many that. carrots. If, yeah, that if that I was, was your the... doctor, if I was your hippie doctor, it's I would have prescribed me carrots. I would have been like, yo, have you tried carrots, dude? This shit apparently is good for your eyes. <laughs> what kind of I heard that was this? a myth, though. I heard it was bullshit. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. I mean, nah, I've ran over a rabbit one time. I'm like, with my car. Yeah. And I was like, he should have seen, he should have seen me coming. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, all day. All them carrots. He's eating rabbits. Yeah, that shit's fake. Yeah, it's got to be fake. Mm -hmm. But it's probably not bad for you. you know? Yeah. But no, like how yesterday we were supposed to shoot and I was like, bro, my brain's fried. I think it's from the marathon. But also like I looked at my watch and I had zero REM sleep. You yeah. could sleep and your body will be rested. But if you don't get your brain to like dream, that's when your brain is rebuilding. And it's, I don't know. I re I'm, again, like I'm not the best to like, I can tell you go look at shit. Like go look this up. Go look up REM sleep. It's supposed to be 20% of your sleep. Yeah, fucking Google it. Yeah, fucking you know? Google it. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> yeah. you know? No one accused you of being I'm a doctor. I'm a drug dealing <laughs> barber. You know? What's up, guys? We're going to take a break really quick because you need to sleep better. Yeah. You probably just heard me say that you sleep for 26 years of your life. I mean, that's insane. You're sleeping for a long time, eight hours a night. That's what you should be sleeping for. But most people aren't doing that. Most people are getting four, five, six, and they're probably not even quality hours. You're probably not even in REM, and that's a problem. Sleep is the start of everything. How smart you can be, how sharp you can be, how quick you can be, how well you can work out, how well you recover, weight loss, everything starts with sleep, and that's why I take it extremely seriously. And if you're having any problems sleeping, I think you should check out my friends over at Beam. Yeah, yeah. That's what you got to check out, dude. Beam. Beam is an amazing company that has made the Beam Dream Powder. This is a great little product. I've tried it. Like I said, I'll never talk about a product in the show that I have not personally tried. Beam Dream is excellent. I took it the other night. I warmed up some water, took two scoops of my Beam Dream, dropped it in there, swirled it around with my little Beam Dream, a uh, little powder swirler. I forgot what you call that, like a little blender thing. Anyway, it was great. Tasted amazing. Felt good. Went to sleep. I sleep pretty good, I'll be honest. I fall asleep good. This morning, though, that I woke up after taking Beam Dream, felt super refreshed. 
didn't feel groggy. Sometimes with these sleep powders, they knock you out and you stay groggy for the first two hours in the morning. Not with this one. I woke up, felt amazing. I really enjoyed it. And I've been taking it every couple days since. I'm telling you, Beam Dream is the truth. They got all sorts of good stuff in it. I'm talking about reishi. I'm talking about magnesium, L-theanine, melatonin, nano CBD, all sorts of stuff that help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. Yeah. All of these things are amazing, amazing supplements, amazing ingredients. I'm telling you, I probably would be taking these things independently. Reishi, magnesium, L-theolene, these are all good for you. And Beam Dream has made it extremely simple to put all of those amazing minerals all into one single powder. I tried the cinnamon cocoa. I thought it was excellent. I just did it with warm water, but you could do it with like a little almond milk, a little whole milk if you're still doing whole milk. But it was excellent. So you guys should check it out. And if you want to do that, you can go to shopbeam.com slash Gagnon. That is shop, S-H-O-P, beam, B-E-A-M, dot com slash Gagnon, G-A-G-N-O-N, and use the code Gagnon at checkout for up to 40% off your order. That's right. I'm telling you, track it with your Whoop, track it with your, you know, Aura Ring, whatever other device you track your sleep with. Beam is excellent. You should share it with them. Let me know what you think. Tell me if you like this product. I think it's great, but I would love to know what you guys think. Try it out. Hit me up. So let's get back to the show. So when you're going to Miami, you all of a sudden start connecting with all these different celebs and you're like, all right, this is sick. Mm -hmm. Did you have a goal of like fame or of content or were you just only focused on money? Like, did you have a plan? No, or I wanted just to be rolling? in the entertainment business. I just didn't know how, you know, I didn't think it was possible like to get there. I never saw anybody in it. But like movies, acting though. Yeah, I thought I could act. I thought I would like watch Ryan Gosling. And I'm like, this guy's just playing himself. I can do this shit. Yeah. And... I tried when I first got to LA. I got to LA through Amber Rose was shooting a pilot for a reality show with Oxygen. And I had done a couple other shows. Like I was on Jersey Shore and I was like kind of getting into the entertainment business. While you were in Miami. Slowly through the haircutting. Yeah. And that's when like Kardashians were blowing up and she wanted me to be like a Scott Disick, like dating the sister and like that asshole persona. Yeah. And... Yeah, the show didn't end up getting picked up and she started like got pregnant with his kid and everything at that time. So they just went a different route, but I was in LA already. So that's like the reason I got there and started meeting some people. Mm. And then I was just like, all right, well, what do I do now? And then I realized that you could buy weed for a lot cheaper there, you know, like a lot cheaper. You could pretty much double your money if you could figure out how to get it back to New York at the time when it was illegal, uh, but it was legal in California. So it was like a gray area, you know, you're not internationally trafficking it. Mm -hmm. You just got to get it back here and then get the money back. And it's like, sort so of that you thing. Buy ounces, USPS. Pounds, yeah, 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 yeah. Over to your connects and friends you still have in Staten Island. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. They wire you and then yeah. you're hustling. Yeah. Interesting. So, but, so I did that. But you got jammed up in Miami before that though. Yeah, yeah. That was... Yeah, because the money wasn't enough from cutting hair. Like how I said, I wanted to go clean and yeah. just do that. But it's expensive, that lifestyle there. Mm -hmm. um, and how did you get pinched? Like what, what happened with the, with the arrest? I was trying to do a little bit of everything. I had a card game at my house. I had a poker game, and I was building that up. I had some friends that were doing it over in Staten Island, and they, like, they like, were like, yeah, let's do it. I got a nice penthouse apartment in Miami right on the water. And I would have a card game there and it went for like six months and I would get like the people that I knew from cutting hair to come play and you take a rake and you know, you have like a couple girls that you know that are like waitresses and they'll get to make good money too. And you just got to have some drugs and like alcohol and stuff to keep people playing. Like it's like a casino, you know, but what was the buy-in? Um, I think it was like 500 bucks. I would start small, you know, I mm -hmm. wasn't like going crazy with it, but you know, people rebuy in and rebuy in um and then somebody ratted on the game and then they busted in it was an illegal search and seizure so they found all the drugs that i had that were like you know party favors i wasn't even selling those drugs it was just to have shit for people but they kicked everyone out from the game and they were just like who's the apartment whose name is it under just like me so i had to go obviously go down for it they ripped the whole house apart Fuck. they were tearing open my like i had macaroni and cheese boxes that weren't even open yet they would rip it open and dump it all out make sure nothing's stashed it's in that waste. like God, come oh, on did the craft they found shit i didn't even know i had in the house <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind of nice actually yeah like, yeah you found drugs you have more drugs i didn't even know about that <laughs> yeah but, been fuck, but not at that point because it's another charge oh fuck yeah so they hey, were uh, you living there with anyone no 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 i just had um no i was just doing the game there and yeah so i got busted for that but that got dismissed because the, it was illegal on their part. Like what the cops did was 
wrong. It was right. crooked. It was so. a legal seizure. But yeah. you don't have to say who, but like, why would someone snitch on a card game? Right? They got busted with a bunch of drugs, and they were just like, you know, give us other people that are doing illegal shit. So somebody ratted on me, and that yeah. is that that like, I never and the really... kid died too. He OD'd oh, anyway fuck. afterwards. That you sucks. Know? Yeah, but he fucking ratted on me, and yeah, I just went to jail for a couple months, and then got out, went back to cutting hair, moved to Miami, got well, back in the, I moved moved to L.A., got back into selling drugs. Did but, you take a charge on the gambling shit, or was it just possession? No, I didn't even care about that at that point, because right. they found coke, oxys, weed, everything, you know, so yeah, they're just yeah. like, that's the stuff we're going to stick them with. Damn, that But they, when they took everything out of the house, they were like walking me out of my nice building that I lived in in Miami, and... All the poker chips were in white boxes, so it looked like I was getting just taken out with bricks and bricks of coke. And there was coke on on my like the, I was charged with possession of cocaine, but it was like a one fucking bag, like one yeah. gram. But because I was taken out like Kilos. that, the valet guys were just like, "Yo, this guy's fucking keys, Tony bro. Montana." That's crazy. This is all just boxes of poker chips. That's so funny. And you you were literally just giving them to people just to keep them playing. And you make good money from like running the casino. Yeah, it was it was Fine. cool. It was supposed to build up to be more, you gotcha. know, like Molly's game. Like you, you've seen that movie, mm -hmm. yeah, like shit like that. Yeah, interesting. So, what are you thinking once you get booked and you're in prison? Here, how I'm going to be here for a long time. They, I didn't have a a date. I wasn't sentenced. I was facing like 25 to life. How you old know? are you? 21, bro. So you're 21 years old. You're not really talking to your parents. Yeah. You leave the town you're from. You're in a town that, like, you kind of don't really know people. And the people you do know are probably not, like, the best at that time. Yeah. Maybe. Like, who do you call? Girl, my girl's cheating on me. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, like, that. even my bail, there was a Nebbia hold on it. It was, like, a million dollars that had to be proved because it was drug charges that were, like, intent to sell, like, drug trafficking. So you had to basically have a million dollars cash and prove that it was legitimate money to get out. So there was like no way I could get out. I'm facing like years and years, you know, like a big chunk of my life I had ruined. But I get in there and um, um, I like finally get into the dorm and Miami jail wasn't bad. I was kind of around like other youth offenders and stuff, but they uh they put me in the in this bunk and the kid that's in the bunk with me is just coincidentally the barber of the dorm. There's like a hundred people in there and he's the barber and I'm telling him like I'm a barber too, and he's like oh shit no way I'm telling him who I cut and everything like that and everybody in jail's a liar you know they're saying like outside I, I fucking do all this yeah, shit I know this guy. I'm cutting celebrities he's like yeah right you know and he's like okay you know like maybe I could get you the clippers and you could cut hair. And if, if that's the case, then you could, like, you'll be set in here, you know, like you won't ever have to, like everybody will owe you stuff. And I was like, oh shit, cool. You know, that's, that's great. So then the next day we try to do it, but there was like a black uh, barber and then there was like whites and Latino barber. So now I'm taking the black clippers, you know, but they don't know that I'm, I cut black guys better than I cut white guys at the time. Like, mm. uh, you know, I, I, this is what I do, you know, but I had no way to prove that. And we had like maybe four magazines in the dorm that would be passed around. One of them was The Source. And I, that was the only magazine I've ever been in. There's a picture this small of me in there for cutting Wiz's hair. And I had proof in there. Like there's no cell phones in jail then or anything like that. And I was about to start a fucking race riot uh, because I was the white guy that was about to take over the black clippers. And they're like, you, you, we need a brother to cut our hair. We're going to have this fucking white boy doing this shit. And I had that magazine and I was like, look, you want to get your hair fucked up by somebody else or you want somebody that's actually good at this shit and knows what they're doing. And then that was it. Like I was set from that point on. Bro. And yeah, it was, so I had like a, a few months there where I was chilling, you know, I was, it wasn't bad at all. And then when I went to LA, you know, I got back, right back into that. But it, weed is like so decriminalized at the time. Like it was such a gray area yeah, where- you know, even if you did get caught, you wouldn't get in big trouble. They would just mostly take it. And it's mostly just the loss of capital, the loss right. of money. So that's what I would deal with Bro, with that. That's so lucky that the one magazine that they had was the one that you happened to be Crazy. In, cutting Wiz's hair. Yeah. My Bro. mom still has the magazine at my... My, like at my parents' house. You, got, you have a picture of it? You got to send that to me. That is so crazy. Yeah, it's in the, on the, behind the cuts, I think. I probably posted on the Tumblr, you Whoa. know? Yeah. That is wild. And so you don't even get sentenced to this point. You're just like in holding. Yeah. And this is at like the jail. You're not even at a penitentiary or nothing. Like, yeah, just jail. Yeah. And so you don't even have papers to prove what you're in there for. Yeah. So people are like, what are you here for? 
yeah. white boy, and you're like, uh, with drugs. And I guess they probably believed you. Yeah, they, nobody was like thinking I was lying about what I was in there for. Yeah, they were all like, "You're gonna get out." There was no warrant. And you're good. And I was like, "The fuck? No way! Am I? They're just gonna let me out?" Mm. And that's what they did. And then one day they were just like, "Whitaker, roll it up. You're out." Oh, so you never even had to go to court. I did have to go to court a couple times, but they, uh, when they did realize that it was like max their time to file charges and like show up to um, like defend against me and like try to lock me up, they couldn't. So that's when they were like, all right, time's up. We got to send them out. Mm. So nothing. It went from like your life's over, you ruined it, you fucked it up to like, all right, you get a second chance, you know? And how does that feel walking out? The best feeling ever. The feeling of the sun hitting your face was just like incredible. And I was so happy. I was so happy to see my girl. And then my friend, my best friend was like, yo, I need to tell you something. He's like, and he showed me a picture of like, you know, her with his brother. And I was like, fuck, man. But I was so happy and I felt so freed and like just, I was like so happy to just be like, all right, cool. I was just like, I didn't even care about it. I just walked away. She's like, no, 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 like, let's talk. And I didn't want to fight, nothing. I was just like, I don't, look, I'm just happy. I got my life back. And I just, it was the best feeling ever, yeah. Bro. And so you were f officially in for how long? Like two months? Uh, f uh, fucking like three and a half. Three and a half. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a decent amount of time. Mm -hmm. And how much rec time did you get? Uh, what do you mean, like going outside? Yeah, like being able to like move around freely. Once a week. Once they a let week? you out once a week for like an hour. Once a week? Yeah. Once a week. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. There was one time where I was, because you got nothing to do and they, like they make like fake, like alcohol, they make wine. Like yeah, you yeah, get all yeah. the fruits and the sugars Bad and shit. And shit yeah. yeah. So I was trying to do that, but I wasn't in there that long. So like, I'm trying to really, I have this little like 20 ounce Pepsi bottle that I'm putting all the shit in and it's yellow. Cause I got all the oranges and stuff in there and they line us up to go out to yard. So we're all in the middle of like, like we have to get in this line, but then they're like, all right, random shakedown. So any contraband, you're going to get more time added on or you get put in the hole like solitary. So I'm fucking panicking, but I got this shit. So I just, I like, you're supposed to burp it and like let a little bit of air out. I didn't get to do it yet that day. So I go real quick just to open it up and chug it. And I fucking open it and it just starts spraying no. out everywhere all over my clothes. And I'm like trying to chug it. I just closed it back up and flung it down under all the bunks. And it just went all the way down in like somebody else's bunk. And they pulled the other guy out. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, fucking. Yeah, I got, I got lucky there. And they're like, whose is this? And you were like, not mine. Just covered in orange. I don't know puke. anything about like, that shit. Yeah, lucky I got out. I'm fucking it. so close to. That yeah, is crazy. Put in the hole. Did you have jobs and shit? Cutting hair, yeah. That was cut hair. Job. Twice a week I was able to cut hair. So that was like plenty of time. And then you just play cards. You mm. just play poker, you know, which I got arrested for. Yeah, what got it's you funny. in? Full circle. Now That's I'm crazy. in there doing it. Were you good at poker? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just go all in. <laughs> Fuck yeah. this shit. That's the yeah, motto for life also. Get rich yeah, and yeah, I try. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Dude, like, dude, I got a fucking, fucking four and a, a seven of clubs. <laughs> I think I got this one, boys. Yeah. I'm going all in, dude. Yeah. Offsuit fours. I'm fucking doubling down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. And so you're just playing cards. Like, did you kind of enjoy prison a little, like, in that regard? Like, in that regard, yeah. Hanging yeah. with the boys, playing Just hanging with cards. the boys. Like, it was. You got to sit with everyone. Like, if what, I had known what my release date would be, I would have had a great time. But that fear of, like, I might be in here, like, I'm in here for who knows. And you're captured, you know? Like, yeah. Once you're in there, you, like, lose hope, you know? You're like, fucking, I might never get out of here, you know? So that was fucking with me, but... And your celly was cool. You liked him? Yeah, yeah, he's the man. He was a good dude. I hung out with him after when he got out, and it wasn't the same, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. he went right back to his old ways of, like, selling coke. He was super hood. Yeah. And he came back to, like, I moved back into the penthouse in Miami Beach on the water, and he, like, yeah, I don't know. We We tried hanging out, but it was, like, you know... Yeah, we kind of lost. We we got out of touch after it was a, a while. It was a situation ship. Uh, you know yeah. I mean? like <laughs> yeah. Context kind of defined yeah. the friendship. Yeah, I took him out a couple nights, so hooked him up. That's you know? cool. Yeah, but no, I get that though. Like the the environment influenced what the relationship could be, and then yeah. once the environment is different, like the relationship is different. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, for sure. And mm -hmm. so while you're in there, like, did you have to fight? Did people try to press you? No, I didn't have to fight there. 
the, when I got arrested in LA, you have to, mm. but that's like so different. That's night and day. Like you, LA is so backwards and just, it's so like racist and just, it's all fucking stupid people, you know, gangs and yeah, LA is wild. There's no, uh, like corrections officers in there. It's just like run by the inmates and politics and stuff. Really? Yeah. You have to join a gang right away. Like you go in with your, the cops will ask you like, what, what do you roll white? You roll, are you wood? Are you peck of wood? Are you fucking this? And you know, like you have to You're pick. Like, I'm Jeff, bro. I was like, yeah. bro, I can't just like, My you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I can't just hang out. You yeah. Know? Just but, vibe. I can't just give some No, there's vibe. like all these rules. You got to do a certain amount of push ups every day. You get strikes. A fight breaks out. You can't look at it because you draw attention to it. That'd be a strike. You don't make your bed. That's a strike. Strikes from the COs? No, the inmates. What? They make these rules. They're like, each one, like, there's like a, a guy that leads the dorm, you know, and they look out for the people, especially the Mexicans. They like make sure that they, their people are strong. You know, they have like an army and they make sure you do that 113 push up burpees, 113 burpees a day. And if you don't, that's a strike. If you get caught not doing it, which like I want to do it, you know. Yeah, you're like, looking for shit to do. You're like yeah. a young dude trying to work out. Yeah. Yeah. But why one one three? MS thirteen. Oh really? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Bro. Yeah. That so. is wild. Okay, I want to get to that, but first the Miami stint. So who's checking in on you at that time? Um, but there was like corrections officers that would come in. But outside. I like, remember when you're in there, like the you're just around dudes all day and it just smells like shit and then like a female like corrections officer comes in there she could be a big monster but the smell of perfume you just get going like it's crazy the effect it would have after not smelling anything good smelling for a while Primal. and then you smell like a woman's perfume yeah it really turns you into a fucking animal crazy right everybody's screaming in there and shit yeah it was <laughs> yeah. nuts that's wild and like you had to call your parents and be like hey i got i got jammed up mm -hmm. yeah what was that call Oh, that's the worst part of it all at the time. Yeah. Like, you know, it was, was them finding out. But, um, yeah, it wasn't good. That, But, you know, I had already fucked up so much at that point. It was like, you know, whatever. But it was all right. You know, they still helped out. Did they, you have friends checking in on you? Like They made sure I got a lawyer and stuff. Like, they they took care of me. They didn't just, like, disown me, you know? Yeah. But which like, they, people, which people... they probably should have at that point. I was doing so much stupid shit. Mm. Did you feel like guilty? Did you feel shame? Yeah, yeah, of course. You're like, wow, I, I came down here and I fucked up. Like, yeah, I messed up my shot. Like, did you feel like it was over? Like, what was the internal dialogue that you were talking? Yeah, yourself? you feel just you just regret it so much. You're like, why didn't I just live live a simple life? You know, like, why didn't I just like, why wasn't I just content with making the money I was making as a barber? Like, why did I have to try to compete with these guys that are, you know? like just fucking loaded and just the lifestyle you see around you in Miami you know it's like you want that for yourself so you want to hang with them you want to it's, it's an expensive lifestyle and then you know you get sucked into that and then you're like why the fuck did I get influenced by that I would have been happy I should have just went fishing or something like you just think about these things like I could just be doing this right now if I would have just done that you think about everything yeah, that's the point. It works. So much you know? time to think. Yeah, that's why they punish you with jail because it, it's effective. You know, it works. Yeah, that's the worst thing. It's just being trapped in a fucking box. Did you, you know? read anything? <laughs> My magazine. I was in. <laughs> no, no. I yeah. I read. I read stuff. You find religion for sure in jail. Did you Did you feel that for you? Like <laughs> yeah, they they would have Sunday. You could get to go to a church. There was like a a church, you know, and everybody's in, it's not like a church, like what you think, like you're all just in orange jumpsuits and, you know, it's like a, like a classroom kind of, but yeah, they would say things in those, like those like sessions that really made you feel like you were put here for a reason because you needed to be like God sent you here. And it made sense, you know, at the time, like you really feel that. So I, you had like the Bible and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And did, was it comforting? Yeah, for sure. Like reading the Bible, you're like, okay, I grew up with this. It's not that important to me. God, maybe yeah. At the time exists. was so boring. Church was so boring. You yeah. know, I never wanted to hear it. Like I, I didn't want to go to church. My parents would make me go up until like a certain age. But then and there, I was like, I could not wait. You know, yeah. Like on oh, Sunday, we get to go do something. You know, get some hope. Yeah, get filled up with some hope. Mm -hmm. Do you still carry that with you a little bit now? Yeah, for sure. It fades of at course. times. You know. 
And then sometimes you need to have a wake up call and like, I just got arrested again in London. I had weed in my bag going through TSA. No. I had a joint in my bag. And this After was, we saw you? Yeah. That, when I left, I got arrested there. It was, that, that was funny though. That was like embarrassing, but it was like, I'm coming from London where weed is illegal and I'm flying to LA where it's like, I was like, officer, come on. I'm like, I'm bringing sand to the beach. Like it's completely, if you know where I'm from, like there's, they sell these in gas stations. Like you go to 7-Eleven, they'll sell you weed. And they were like, yeah, we know, but it's illegal here. So, you know. And then I'm in jail there, and there's kids like, are you Jeff Wick? What are you doing here, mate? No. And I'm like, bro, this is insane that I'm like, it was only a few hours. You know, they're like airport jail, they book you, and there's like, all right, it's a, just a uh, slap on the wrist, like a warning, and they send me out. No fines, no nothing, no, not even a ticket. They missed your like, flight, though. Missed my flight, yeah. So I stayed one more night. But, yeah, I was in jail for like six hours. Or it's like three to six hours. Who something. were the other kids you were in I jail? I took a nap in there. Shaban was with me. Yeah, Shaban. Shaban Wait, I swear. For real? He was, yeah, he was. He was what? With me. Did I meet him? Did, was he, uh, did he come to the show? He wasn't sit. He didn't come to the backstage, but he was at the show. Yeah. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, damn! I wish I met him. Yeah. So as they're like, as they're like cuffing me and stuff, about to take me away, he's like, "Yo, you want a piece of gum?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And he puts his Xanax in my mouth. No. <laughs> and I'm like, I knew exactly what he was doing, and I was like, "All right, fucking." Nice. Then I'll get a nice. I took a nice nap in in the cell, and I was like, "This is funny." It, Bro, it was like, so, so he bars you up, and then yeah. you just knock out in the cell. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, and you're like literally looking at these kids, and they're just like, "Are you Jeff Wick?" And you're fucking <laughs> barred out, just like, "What is going on?" <laughs> I'm talking to the the cop that's taking my mug shot, and he's like, he he knows of me, like he he knows I'm a YouTuber, and he wants to be a YouTuber, but like an astrology YouTuber. So I'm like. He's asking me for advice on like YouTube and stuff. Thumbnails and shit. <laughs> Just like, you know, like how did I get into Like how did I make it into a career and stuff? You're like, you know? like it is actually. It's funny you bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I should have said that. But I was like, look, man, like, you know, nowadays they'll like do surveys with kids in school. And if you ask them like what they want to be when they grow up, the most popular thing is they want to be a YouTuber. Like it's such, it's the most sought after profession now. Like it used to be astronaut, doctor, lawyer, whatever, but now it's YouTuber. So like there's so much competition. You need to put everything into this shit. This job here, this is a safety net. And he's like, yeah, you're right. This is a safety net. Like I get it. And like he, I might've made him quit his job. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, so what you're going to do is you're going to fucking get me out of these cops and I'm going to fly back to goddamn LA. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what? And then we're going to collab. You're going to make it big. Dude. Man, I'll make you a big star. Okay, when we make the movie about this, that's how the scene will go. Yeah. Is that you just talk to the dude and you're like, okay, I'll tell you everything. Yeah. You want to yeah. be Mr. Beast? I'll tell you. I'll, I'll introduce you to Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. Just whatever you need. You'll, do, fucking... you'll do an astrology collab with him. <laughs> <laughs> from no one. He's going to watch fucking Are you in a choir? <laughs> that's the whole fucking video that's crazy yeah yeah so and you know like i i i got to a point where like i gotta stop talking about jail because i haven't been arrested in fucking you know, like a decade now yeah almost um well three weeks <laughs> now it's like freshened <laughs> up you know so you want to ask me about it cool I'll, i got i got updated stories why are people in airport jail like you're in there with other people like did you ask like what are you here for well, there were there wasn't all just airport arrests. Like it was close to the airport. But oh, okay, it so it wasn't literally in the airport. No, no, they okay. drove me to the station and stuff. What are the other people in there for? Just like dumb shit, a fight, or something fucking like, like, whatever. Uh, you didn't ask. He, you just kept your head down and fucking knocked. He out. said he was in there for fraud. The guy that was talking <laughs> to me, yeah, fraud. I mean, how can, what can you do fraud in fucking England? You know. <laughs> and then you're just in a cell with this dude, barred out. That's so funny. Yeah. And no, you, they gave me my own cell. And then you make it home and you're like, all right. And I was, I had the marathon coming. So I ran a half marathon that day and like, I'm fucking starving in there. Like, can we get you a sandwich or something? Like they're so nice in there. They were treating me so good compared to my like memories from, you know, my experiences here and yeah, being out there, I was like, oh, this shit is fucking yeah. dope. Like, you need a prime, dude. Give mm -hmm. me a fucking prime immediately. Yeah. Yeah. You need a prime. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so you get out of Miami. I need electrolytes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You give me a Gatorade yeah. of Prime. Yeah, electrolyte would be fire. And then, so you get out of jail, you feel amazing, and you get up, you get back in the penthouse in Miami. How does that work? Oh uh, well, I just had my um, I had my friend paying rent for me, like just making sure, I, like hold it down. But yeah, then I just when you get out, you go home. And then how long were you there for? 
Um, like another month. And then immediately two. to LA. I don't know. Maybe it was like, uh, yeah, like four or five months. I probably yeah. stayed there. I moved to a different place though. I moved out of that unit. Bad memories. Yeah, I got to get out of there. Bad memories from getting arrested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and having them <laughs> fucking tear apart my place. Throw your and stuff. Yeah, throw your mac and cheese everywhere disrespectfully. <laughs> oh, You're yeah. an Italian dude. That's that's hard for you to watch. Nah, it was like, like my reggaeton. I didn't know how to cook. It was like craft <laughs> a box of craft mac and cheese. Damn. You think I stuffed cocaine in that <laughs> and <laughs> sealed it back up? I'm not gonna disrespect the pasta. Okay, yeah. I'm an Italian kid. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So before you leave LA, that's where you meet all the dudes. How do you meet Mac Miller? What's up, guys? We're gonna take a break really quick because you need to stop putting bad things into your lungs. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. I can't say it technically speaking, but you know what I'm talking about. You're late at night at a bar with the boys. You're hanging out outside, had a couple drinks. Someone whips out something that you're going to breathe into your lungs, and it's not going to be good for you. You might start coughing. It might feel good for a second, but the next day you know that you did some damage. What do you do? You get fume. That's right. This little device right here looks interesting. It's beautiful design. It feels good in my hands. I like to fidget with it. It actually has this little uh, like dial thing. It actually controls the airflow, but it's also just fun to fidget with. I'll be playing with this thing throughout the whole podcast. What I like about Fume is that instead of electronics, it's completely natural. Instead of vapor, it uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural delicious flavors. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're anything like me, you probably heard that and you're like, flavored air? Really, Mark? What is that? Yeah, this is the truth. Fume right here, I'm going to actually show you. If you're looking at the screen, you got a little cartridge that goes in there. And when you breathe in, it just feels amazing. It's just flavored air going into your mouth, going to your lungs, making you feel good, making you feel refreshed, making you focus on your breathing. When you're focused on your breathing, you're focused on being present. It reduces your anxiety. It'll make you feel better. That is what you can get with Fume. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. Flavored air. What is that? I'm telling you, take a breath. You'll feel great. Right now in this one, I got mint flavor. I think it's peppermint. It just makes you feel good. It just fills you up, lowers your anxiety, makes you focus on your breathing, and it gives you the sensation of taking part in a habit without the bad part of the habit. That's right. You can be hanging at the bar, breathing in something, but it's not bad for you. You don't have to feel guilt the next day being like, oh, why did I do that? Mm -hmm. You don't go home and your wife is like, why do you smell like that? Mm -mm, not with fume. The only thing you're smelling like is delicious peppermint. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to break the bad habits. I want you to take the bad out of your habits. And if you want to do that, you go to Tryfume. That's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com and use the code GAGNON, G-A-G-N-O-N, to save an additional 10% off your order today. Now, if you're interested, what I want you to do is check out the Journey Pack. The Journey Pack is going to give you everything you need to get started on your journey of living a more healthy lifestyle. Check out the journey pack. It's got everything you need. It's got all the different little uh, inserts that are going to go into your fume. It's got the fume itself. It's going to be the best way to get started. Use the code GAGNON because they're giving all the people that listen to this show that want to improve their health a little discount. So check it out. Take the bad out of your habits. Start taking control of your health and let me know how you feel. Let's get back to the show. Through like Amber, Wiz, and then Big Sean, like he was just there at the tour. Like, you know, they, they do the show, you hang out after. Like, it would it should be like how we all met, you mm -hmm. know, after you guys did the show. And then Being we came around. back in the green room, green room. Yeah. And we all met like that. What was Max's energy at the time? Was he, he was such a nice kid. Like, I'm not even saying it because, like, you know, he passed away and, like, he genuinely was so cool. And I was nobody. I'm just a barber, you know, I'm like giving $20 haircuts at the time. And, he was always like, oh, give me, like, let me put my number in your phone. Like, let's fucking, let's hang out and shit, you know? And I would be like nervous to even call him or like text him anything, but he was just so nice and like a real, just a real genuine dude. And for me to first, like first interaction with celebrities, you know, that was cool to have somebody that was like so cool. Yeah. You know? That's dope. Just welcoming, like took you right in. I saw him at a restaurant like years later. He was like, come sit down, fucking hang out, you know? Really? Yeah. In LA. Did you get nervous cutting their hair? Uh, yeah, yeah, you do a little. Mm -hmm. You definitely do a little bit. Um, like repeat business with this dude would be very nice. Yeah. And yeah. if the edge is off a little. Yeah, there was this one time when I was cutting this guy. He's a point guard in the Miami Heat. And I like, you know, like a black guy's hair, you got to like go with the grain. Like when you cut like white hair, you go against it. Mm. So you kind of like with the waves, like you're, you're like going very gently down. And I nicked like a little patch 
And only I could tell, but I remember like seeing it on the jumbotron, and I was like, "Fuck, no, man, that's not." Like, I hope you don't see that shit, bro. Yeah, did you ever say anything? No, no, no. But I noticed. I was like, "Damn, I fucked that up." Damn. Yeah, because you gotta have a real steady hand just to like no guard and just you know go. Yeah, I fucked up. Dude, it must be sick just being able to like touch black dude's hair all day. (laughs) That's a perk of the job. I don't really any. I need more black guests on the barbershop show. I but like. I don't know. Just that's nice, dude. You know, like anytime I try to touch a black dude's hair, they get all mad about it. You know, do you do that often? I don't do it as much anymore, but just on the subway sometimes. You know, (laughs) you see a nice fro, you just kind of want to get your knuckles in there, but they get all they get all pissed about it. You know, (laughs) so I don't I don't do it as much. But maybe on the subway, dude. If I could be a barber, I could. That's just free reign. Yeah. That must be awesome. There you go. (laughs) That's kind of the dream, dude. Yeah, become a foot foot massage. Andrew's got a foot fetish, huh? He he doesn't call it a fetish. He says it's not a fetish. What is it then? He says it's a uh, it's just an addiction. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> oh, okay, a lifestyle. I, I think the way he would describe it is probably like uh, it's an indicator about overall health. Yeah, you got a nice foot. Other things are probably well kept. You probably are a person that cares about you know the finer things in life. Okay, yeah. So it's 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 sort of like a like a blue check for for a person. I think you know what I mean. All right. I think that's the way he describes it. And when he describes it that way, all of a sudden it's not a crazy. Yeah. Like, it's ever, cool that he's honest and open about it too. Would you ever zoom in on a foot on Instagram? I I might have, yeah, yeah. Actually, I have. Now that I think about it, yeah. Because I like athletes, you know, like I like like that, dudes. No, okay. like female, like a, a girl that runs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, that's like, you get those those videos on YouTube. It's like like top ten long jumps of the year. Oh and it'll just yeah, be there's like, some some high jumpers are like fucking beautiful but the models. thumbnail will just be just a swedish girl ass. caked up just yeah. full ass just like buddy yeah. the cake boss yeah in yeah. the thumbnail yeah and you're like all right i'll watch some long jump and then like all right like what's it? go follow on instagram but then you look at like oh do you see the foot's out and like you use athlete's foot you know you zoom in and there's like a bunch of calluses and like black toenails and don't stuff look at that. You know, yeah, just block it out. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't have it all. You know, that's that's really what it the is. Fu- who the fuck am I? Like, I need everything perfect. You right? know, I'm, I'm, who are you? I want an athlete, what is and your now foot I want them like? to f- disgust things. Exactly. My you know foot, I mean? especially now after the, that 26 miles, beat the fuck up. Rugged, right? Disgusting. Yeah. 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 So who are you to be demanding that a girl has everything? You know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. That's why I said it. I was like, you know, it's a little entitled. I get that. I'm the I'm the same way. Mm-hmm. You can't have everything. You know, it, like. If she's like beautiful, athlete, good attitude, you know what I mean, yeah. caked up, mm-hmm. she might have hammer toe. Uh, and you got to live with that. I got a fucking hammer toe. What about like a UFC fighter girl? You ever see like a really, because some of them are hot. Yeah, you yeah know? There's, there's some pieces. And that's, sure. there's something about that, like a girl that's really trained in martial arts, got maybe a little cauliflower ear, like that's, that can't be a deal breaker, you know? Can I be honest with you? You think cauliflower ear is hot? I don't. I, I don't know. I, I, the idea of like a girl uh, physically dominating me is not particularly arousing well and there's weight classes you know like if i fight like a, <laughs> if i fight like rose nama Yunus, i'll fucking you know she fights at 105 or like oh, is that what it is 115 or something yeah what the fuck is she gonna do to me you know that I don't head know. kick you might get fucked up i don't know i don't know really how it works like i would love to see that in the ufc one day like maybe yeah. that's what ufc needs like the way they like combined all the martial Man arts versus woman they do that in russia that's what I'm saying. And who wins? Like, what's the number? Like, what's the money line on that? You know what I mean? Like, can me and your dad bet on that? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, would, like, trained. Uh, I would love to see, like, a really fucking, like, I would love to see Amanda Nunes fight Bradley Martin. You know? Uh, yeah, that's one of those where I'm like, my gut is telling me that probably sheer size and strength probably wins. Yeah. But who knows? She could. She's got hands. She's got hands, and she and might. She's got a ground game, and you, you know? might just. You might just need like an ankle lock. I don't and know. And feet too. Kicks. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Glass you, yeah, Bradley's you fucking teep someone perennial like, nerve. Like remember, Sugar Sean got <laughs> hit in the knee. <laughs> yeah, that's all you need. That could take out. Bradley. You might need a nerve, and then he's just got fucking you know limp foot. Set that up. I don't you know? know. But like that's a pay per view that we the people want to see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Jake Paul's fighting some boxer now, nobody knows. I want Amanda Nunez versus Bradley Martin. I want Amanda Nunez just basically against like any guy that tweets at her, like, this girl sucks. Yeah. Like, that's a fight. Yeah. Because like Brad, I don't know. Brad might want that fight. I don't know. But yeah. like just a dude on Twitter that talks shit against Amanda, mm-hmm. I want to see that fight. Yeah. Cause then it's like a real like, oh, he wants that. He and wants there's to ask so him. many. There's so many like MMA critics online. Like anybody posts, like if I, even if I post like hitting mitts or something, like, you know, somebody's gonna have something to say. 
It could be McGregor hitting something, and they're yeah. like, oh, you know, he's not turning his foot properly. Bro, he's, like, training with his kid. Yeah. They're like, this kid, come on. This yeah. kid he doesn't have the fundamentals. And you're like, he's eight. All yeah. right, so maybe just kind of chill for a second. Yeah. I mean, it does seem it does seem crazy. I don't know. I, don't, I would never do one of those one of those fights, I don't think. Like an influencer fight? I've never really been in a fight, I'll be honest. Yeah. It's... It seems a lot more like nerve wracking doing that than like a street fight. Like I'll just street fight all day, but going out there, you really put, you really risk a lot. Like Logan risks a lot doing that. You know, like he's, he's risking that billion dollar prime company. You know, like if he gets fucking him and KSI just get embarrassed, knocked out both of them back to back. Imagine yeah. what happens to that stock. It's you're losing billions. It's like Elon Musk when he says Tesla's not worth. It shouldn't be worth as much, you know. Yeah. Or Elon Musk smokes weed on Joe Rogan, and then the fucking stock drops, you know. Bro. Like they do take big risks with that shit, but big that, risk, big reward. You yeah, know? it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't get paid off hard work. You get paid off risk. Mm-hmm. And they yeah. are they are putting it out on the line. You don't really think about that. You're risking humiliation, and that's what people want. They want they want to see humiliation, yeah. and that's why they pay the big bucks. Yeah. People yeah. are sick. We're fucking sick. Yeah, no, we love it. We like to think we're different than back in the day, like, dude, gladiators in Roman times. Like, mm -hmm. that's barbaric. No, nah, that's in our DNA. Dude, we love it. We like yeah. seeing people put it on the line. We like to see people take big risks. Yeah, you that's see very Elon satisfying. and, and Zuck, they're, like, as soon as... That's a conspiracy. I, I know, like, I know, I, like I know you don't want to even, like, give it any attention. No, no, we can't. I just, I don't like, I don't want them to fight. Oh, uh, why? Our billionaires got to be working on other stuff. Yeah. Like, this is the end of the empire. If, if, if our billionaires, if our best and brightest are, like, trying to scrap... Like, but what's he doing now? Elon putting chips in people's brains and shit, you know, going through like, you've already done, like the Tesla shit. Cool. You, you did what you had to do. Um, but he said on Rogan that he was like, I'll fight him anytime, any place, any, any style of martial arts. And Rogan's like, you know, he's training, right? Like <laughs> yeah. he's got an octagon in his backyard. Like he's taking it very serious. He wants to do like an MMA fight. Um, Zuckerberg wants yeah. to, you know. And he's like, I'll just lay on him. And, you know, you can't have that conversation with Rogan. Like, he will bring up everything. Like, wait, no, that doesn't make sense. That's not going to work, actually. Yeah. Like, he's very literal about that stuff. So he's breaking it down. And just sure enough, as soon as Elon's finally like, I want to do this. Like, you know, let's see if he responds now. And Joe's like, well, on a platform like this, I think, you know, now people will probably want it to happen. And then sure enough, the next day, Zuckerberg tears his ACL, and he's, like, oh, in a hospital bed. I didn't bed. realize he tore his ACL. I, you don't see any conspiracies in that? No. I mean, I can, I can see the conspiracies. You don't think obviously. Elon fucking Neuralink that ACL or some shit? Sent, like, a little Tanya Harding situation? You remember that? That skier that they busted her knee? Oh, with? yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Margot Robbie played her in the movie, right? Exactly. So yeah. You're saying... That's what I should have done to Cody Co. fucking break his kneecap <laughs> yeah. before the race. Right before he's about to hit the finish line, you got to call your boys up. <laughs> yeah. Send the Albanians to fucking trip him. You know what I mean? That's what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, that might have happened, honestly. It might have got that neural link. I mean, if anyone can, like, weaponize the Wi-Fi, it's probably Elon. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He could send, like, a Wi-Fi signal. Get yeah. that ACL feeling a little weak. I think he got that shit. I think he somehow got that shit torn, you know? Yeah. Because now that it. puts Zuck out for knee injuries are like eight months recovery. Yeah, it's just brutal. So whatever he did, you know. It's just brutal. But I'm also like, I give that to, to, to Zuck. If I had to put money on it right now. Yeah. I probably, I think Zuck wins by submission. Yeah. Second round submission. For sure. Yeah. I get beat up by guys smaller than me in jiu-jitsu. You know, he's taking it serious. He's training. Um, if you were in a street fight now, how would you handle it? Would you go to, like, leg kicks? Like, when you're young and you're in a street yeah, fight, you just yeah. kind of, like, lean back yeah, and no, swing? Yeah, no, teep kick. Yeah. I, throw, I throw a teep kick. Yeah. And it goes at the stomach, and if it hits the nuts, fucking who cares? There's no instant replay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, below the belt. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Especially if it's against, like, a scummy crackhead or something, like a fucking homeless guy <laughs> comes to attack you in an alley. Yeah. Teep kick. You know, you got a yeah. sneaker on them, you know, blood-to-blood -blood contact. Yeah, just put them them toes yeah. right in the guts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of what and you need. you could push them away, and they might fall down. It might be over with, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a video one time of a dude doing stand-up, and a guy tried to, like, attack him on stage. He tried to, like, charge him, and he yeah. just sparta kicked him. Just, like, like yeah. and just, like, laid him out. And I was like, "That's kind of the move." That's the way. Yeah, it's sort of like a like a don't, don't don't swing, don't get your feet, don't get your hands involved. Yeah, like you just go heel into the chest, fucking. Mm -hmm. And I've broke this hand so many times. You see the difference? Oh shit! And this is my ha my hair cutting hand. So every time I break it, I'm losing money. But so, these knuckles are way better at punching now. Uh yeah. Right? Yeah, like, dude, yeah, yeah. Hold that shit up again. 
I've never seen that. Like that that thing is a fucking weapon. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Up. Like how many times have you broken it, you think? Um, these two I broke like two, three times. One of them was on Shaban, like play fighting. Mm. Like fucking hit him in his elbow or some shit. And but it was after I broke it a couple times. And then this one I broke and when I got in a fight with some kid in LA that was some crackhead on the street all coked up. Is that outside Trader Joe's? Yeah. Yeah. Did I did I uh you heard that story on Impulsive or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's the one that, yeah. But he hit you with a kombucha first. Got me good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck and Trader Joe's bag disguised it, blasted me. I mean, this is a real LA fight, if I've ever heard of it. Dude. Like, dude, <laughs> yeah. He came out with the kombucha outside Trader Joe's, so I had to give him the one too. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Damn, that <laughs> shit was solid. The fucking animal style, the double double. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's what they gotta call it, dude. The, the double double. Side, double double. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's fucked up. How many so you broke it this one? Your left hand or only your right hand? Um, only the right. Damn. What other times did you break it? Do you remember? What's that story? Um, first time I broke it was uh, in a barbershop. And I had a fight at the barbershop. Why, why a fight at the barbershop? Because I bought a motorcycle off this dude that was like a fucking pill head. He was like addicted to oxys. And he sold me a motorcycle, but I didn't know at the time because I was like 17. It, the, it had a lien on it. Like he financed it. So he didn't even own it. And I didn't get the title, but I paid him like half the money. So now I just have this bike that I can't register. He's a fucking, he already spent the money on on all these pills and shit. And now I have all these guys around me that are old. They're like my big brothers and stuff in the barbershop. So they're putting the battery in my back. They're like, yo, when he comes in here, you need to press him, you know? So now he shows up to get a haircut. And I'm like, yo, Paul, come outside, you know? And he comes outside and he sees me and like my energy and stuff. He He was maybe like, 25 and I was like 17 so he's like ready to fucking punk me and he takes off his glasses like he's gonna fight so as soon as he took off the glasses I blasted him and I dropped him with that first shot and then I hit him like a couple times in his forehead and then I felt my hand break and I remember like my my boy Nick who was next to me the fucking big tatted up guy that I lived with he's like kick his fucking teeth in like going nuts like spitting foaming out the mouth like he, you know that one was that was a good one but then I broke my hand. I couldn't cut hair for two months. And you're not making money for two months. And then you go sell wheat. That might be part of the reason why. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But you, you're like, are, would you say you're short tempered in that way? Like, if well, this I, I had to, you know, I had to do something. You know, mm-hmm. this guy just robbed me for all this money. That's a lot of money to me at that time. You know. Yeah. And yeah, I had to like everybody knew in the barber shop. These guys are gonna fucking clown me if I don't do something. Mm-hmm. You know. So I had to. You know. Like, I'm sure you, we could have talked it out if it wasn't if I wasn't like so aggressive with my approach. But mm-hmm. no, it, he he fucking knew what he was doing. Yeah, you know, giving me that bike when he didn't even own it. You know, right. the bank did. So now the bank's just gonna come and take the bike from me, and then I get yeah, you get fucked. Well, it's not like I fixed it with hitting them. You know, what kind of bike was it? A CBR 600. Oh hell yeah! Yeah. What year? 2006. Yeah, those are sick. Yeah. 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 Do you still have any bikes? No, no, no. You don't no have more. Any? Nah. I got Honda, two Honda Shadows. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I love them. Really? Yeah, so you... I, I like Japanese bikes, though. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. But, but, like, that's, like, I I just like to cruise. I don't like to go too fast. Yeah. Like, I, I don't really They're like, scary, man. I, I like had so many bikes, friends die. Naked bikes. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, I've known a lot of people that died, and it's, like, it's not worth going that fast. I just like mm-hmm. to cruise with my grill, just, like, go across the Verrazano, go out to, like, Oh, that's dope. So Delaware. she rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves it. She likes it kind of more than me sometimes. Was she against it at first? She was just scared. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she was never against it. She was just like, don't die, please. Like, mm-hmm. that would really, like, kind of ruin the whole week if you died. So, like, just don't. <laughs> if you, if yeah. you wouldn't mind, just don't die. And, yeah. uh, yeah. So, like, she was just scared. But, like, once we ride around, like, we would ride, like, the Revels. Like, you, have you ridden the Revels? Like, they probably got introduced after you left. But, like, they're, yeah, like, the I got little, out uh, of it. R- I, rental, I go through a lot of phases. Rental scooters, the Revels. Oh, okay. And so me and her would just ride around on those for like hours. Yeah. Spend like 200 bucks on a Revel. Yeah. And then I was like, yo, I'm just going to get a bike. Yeah. But it's like, it's my favorite thing. I love it. They are. They are fun. It's dirt bikes. That's the I goal. I love dirt bikes. I'm going to get a farm and just get like mad dirt bikes. Hell yeah. That is the goal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same. We got the same goal. Same dream. Literally. I'm like, I, I look at places upstate and just like fantasize. Yeah. I'm, you want to stay in New York for the rest of your life, you think? I need to be near a city to do stand up. Yeah. And, uh, Obviously, just like with flagrant and all the other stuff we got going on, like I'm just gonna be wherever the boys are, and so yeah. and for the foreseeable future, that's New York. If that happens to be LA, like I don't know, I don't really love LA. I'll be honest. 
Yeah. I like the weather and stuff, but like... That's it. That's all it is, the you weather. Can't, you can't really beat New York people. Yeah, New York people. I love that people have real jobs here. I love that I get to go home and like just have family here. And I have friends that have real jobs, not social media friends. I have like one social media friend that I like, or maybe like two. I like Mike <laughs> is like my boy that I could relate to, but that's because he did heroin his whole life. He's been in and out of jail. Yeah. You know, so like I can, I can hang with Mike and like not do work. Like I can actually just chill with him. Yeah. And... Yeah, can you explain that to me? That's the thing, I'll be honest, for you that is, like, the biggest, like, question mark in my mind. That, like, you're a real dude that grows up in Staten Island. Like, I know guys like you that mm -hmm. grow up here, that live here, like, that get out and maybe have a dream and, like, go pursue something. But, like, you are in, like, an L.A., Hollywood kind of world. Yeah. And, again, I don't know L.A., Hollywood people, really. Like, I don't really hang – like, that's not my circle. But it just seems like there's a lot of uh, desire to like monetize relationships, monetize everything. Like it's all everything. Well, that's content. what it all is. You know, everybody's just looking to grow them, their bank accounts or their followers. So is it difficult for you as like a real dude that seems like, you know, you're genuinely interested in connection, interpersonal like yeah. friendship to deal and operate within a world that is so antithetical to those values? Yeah, it was, but you just got to take your emotions out of it. You know, you got to just see it for what it is. Like these people are doing that. So you kind of know, like, you know, I have a guard up with a lot of this, these like people. And I was fucked over big time. You know, like I had a group of friends that I thought were all real friends. They were real friends, but you know, when business comes into it and they need to pick a side and the one guy has more followers, they're going to go with him, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why, that's what I mean by take your emotions out of it. You know, like I get it. I understand. Like I forgive those people that, you know, chose to take a side against me and they were given orders not to talk to me and shit like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't respect it, but I get it, you know? So, uh, yeah, once, like, I got through that, like, I, I I keep my relationships with my real friends, like, you know, like, Siobhan's and I got my boy Cody and, like, all my, my friends that I grew up with. And we've had horrible fights too, you know? Like, we've had fallen mm -hmm. outs before, but, yeah, they keep me who I am, you know, like, I'm sure I like how your boys, like all the whole flagrant crew, like they keep you, you, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm not going to get too far into like being an LA guy because I'll keep these guys in my life always to make sure they humble me and we fucking talk shit to each other. If I'm doing some corny shit, like, you know, they'll check me on it. How do they check you? They just make fun of me, you know? In the group chat, just like drop a thumbnail, drop a video, be like, Jeff, what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's the awesome. Ken Barbie, you know, that <laughs> Wait, shit. Did they? That shit got me kicked out of the gang, you know, <laughs> <laughs> almost, you know. Yeah, but like. So that's why when I said you're Ken, you were like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like, you're doing it too now? What <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. Even you? Yeah. I expect it from Shabam, but not you. Yeah. But no, it's important to keep those people. That's awesome. Yeah. That's like good that you do that. Uh, like, I don't know if you did that on purpose or like. For sure, yeah. There were times where I thought I need to get away from everybody, but then like you come back to it, you're like, nah, I need this. Yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Especially if the group you're with is like solid. And it seems like all your boys from back home are like solid dudes. Yeah. And being able to have guys that have real jobs. Like how often do you hear people like within your world or even like podcast shit that are just like, man, dude, like my day is so hard. And you're like, bro, you, like I have boys that work back home in Florida that like have real hard jobs. Like, yeah. No matter how hard this shit gets. It's not even close to how hard it is for like my friends that actually still have real jobs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my boy, that's just like working on cars all day yeah like drip, dripping in oil like grinding for like yeah i see both sides of that though like uh, when when you're in this business it's sort of a curse because it's always on your mind like you can never get an actual break even if you're on vacation like you're thinking about like there's more i could be doing i could be making content out of this uh, you know i'm doing the the barbershop show i have the product line there's always campaigns and more content i could be shooting around that I could be sponsoring people. I got the podcast, looking for guests, looking for, you know, booking people, doing research, editing. Like there's, it's never ending. Patreon mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you got fucking 10 platforms you have to post on. Clips, you know, there's just emails, meetings. Just is so much that goes on in mm -hmm. this that you have to wake up and go to sleep thinking about it. And you're never really fulfilled completely, which is a problem. I'm sure you deal with that too. Mm -hmm. Where like, it would be nice to just, some days just go in and labor. I think that's why I run so much because I want to torture myself. Like actually like put in real labor. You got to suffer for real. Yeah. Because sometimes it's just mindless labor is fucking nice. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Yeah. No, I, I see that. Like I, I have friends that like still work in like landscaping or like that I even just like do roofing and shit. Mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, being able to like go home at the end of the day and I got my money 
Yeah. And I don't have to think about this roof anymore. And I get to look at it and be like, oh yeah, I did a good job with that roof. Yeah. Like that feels nice. Yeah. And like there's a simplicity and a piece to that that is like enviable sometimes for people that are in more like entrepreneurial roles. But at the same time, I would much rather be doing this. Than, of course. And yeah. I, I think if you ask those people, they'd be like, yeah, dude, I'd much rather be like in a tent, busting balls, drinking sparkling water than like uh -huh. laying a roof in the summertime, bro. Like, yeah. I don't know, but I, but I get it though. There is a simplicity and something that's that's nice about that. Yeah, I'm not I'm not complaining whatsoever. You know, I yeah. could I, I've I've done both sides. I've labored. You know, I I would cut hair all day from like ten to ten yeah, at that's night, brutal. and your back hurts, your feet fucking hurt. You can't wait to get out of there. But I think the happiest I ever am is like when you feel that sense of accomplishment and you need that constantly. Like you need to do that. You can't just do something and be set for like like I don't know how actors do a movie and then they're like they take like months off you know yeah because it it fades and you fall into depressions if you're not constantly doing something that you feel good about yourself like i i put in hard work i'm proud of this today you know mm -hmm. that's what i realized actually makes me feel happy consistently yep. you know it was like consistent work consistent like all right well, that's, i'm proud of myself i talked to have you heard of sebastian younger no he's a he's an author he wrote the book restrepo or he made the documentary restrepo uh, which is awesome about the Afghan war. And then he wrote a book that turned into a movie called Perfect Storm featuring George Clooney. It's mm -hmm. like a popular movie that came out. But he's just like an awesome author and writer and he's written a bunch of books I really like. Tribe and War are like awesome books. And one of the things he outlines in Tribe that I just always think about, I like, I can't stop thinking about it. He's like the three things that give human beings happiness, the way he understands them, is purpose, having a thing that you're like, okay, this is what I'm here on earth for. And that can mm -hmm. be macro or micro. Like, okay, here's what I'm here for the next three months to do. Uh, competence. I mean, it could be kids. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like an achievement. It could be like, be a great father. That's mm -hmm. an awesome purpose. And ultimately, I think probably one of the, like the supreme purposes in existence. Yeah. Uh, and then competence. Like, am I able to do what my job is at a level where I'm still pushed and that it's difficult, but I'm still really good at it. And mm -hmm. I might be the best at it. Yeah. And then lastly, community. Like, am I, do I have a group of people that fulfill me, that I feel like I'm contributing to, that I'm able to help, that are able to help me, that give me like a real sense of community. Mm -hmm. And if you have those three things, like it is all the other, like uh, he describes in the book, like exogenous indicators of status are completely irrelevant to those, those three things. Yeah. So like money, all the rest of it. And obviously like, yeah, it's nice to have money, but that can be attached to the purpose and the competence. Like you just need enough mm -hmm. in my mind. Least, again, I don't know for everyone, but like for me personally, I think about those three things all the time. Yeah. And just have enough that your bills are covered. You have some financial freedom. That's, that's really, that's what I look at. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And that's why like every time you're like talking about those should statements, like I, I do that. Like if mm -hmm. I'm not working towards something, I get anxious. Cause I'm like, Oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing this. And what I remind myself is like, I shouldn't be doing anything. I could be doing that. Yeah. I could. But I'd rather be hanging with my girl or like I'd rather be in Florida spending time with my ne nieces and nephews. Yeah. Because like that to me is like the community element that is really irreplaceable that I know the outside factors of status won't even come close to. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I always look at you guys and I'm like, damn, like I I should be doing stand up or trying to get good at that and go down that lane because you guys could do so much with that like yeah. Andrew selling out Madison Square Garden it's awesome is just like so sick such a huge accomplishment twice. two nights twice damn Are second you, one sold out so time. do you open there yeah damn that's sick I'm terrified <laughs> <laughs> it's bet. crazy yeah. dude yeah it would be but see like that's the thing you're gonna you're gonna crush it but yeah. you'll go into it with those nerves and that anxiety and that's just gonna make you that much better mm -hmm. yeah, yeah but that's a, that's a part of the purpose you know what i mean like that's like okay i know i can do stand-up that makes me feel competent mm -hmm. i have a purpose where i'm like okay i want to be like really set for those shows i want to be completely confident and then i have community i'm doing it with schultz i'm doing it with all the boys on the pod like yeah excuse me that makes me feel like really fulfilled that's yeah. awesome yeah that's the best huh like after a good show all you guys and you're doing it together that's the whole thing bro like the best part of stand-up i always say like is the hang after like yeah you're so proud of each other you know yeah, you're like bro that line like especially if like you're in like a smaller club and like people are like riffing and shit yeah like you do like that coming up in the city 
And I didn't even get to do this as much, which I kind of like regret sometimes. But like coming up in the city, you'll be just doing like open mics with you and your boys and everyone sucks and the shows suck and everything's yeah. miserable. Mm -hmm. And you're bombing, everyone's bombing. Some, maybe one person gets a joke to work and everyone's like, oh shit. But then you see your boy on stage just like eating shit and it's yeah. the funniest thing in the world. Yeah. And then you go to a diner at 12 o'clock and you sit there till three in the morning dying laughing. Yeah. And then you go to sleep and then you wake up at like two and then you do it over again and you mm -hmm. do that for 10 years years yeah what better way to live like that shit is yeah. fire especially when you're young like in your 20s that is the most fun thing ever yeah like listen to like rogan stories even from like the comedy store like the comedy store was built on that ethos mm -hmm. like go do shows do a bunch of spots hang out drink eat food until three in the morning make fun of each other as ruthlessly as possible ideally someone leaves the table like angry and like runs storms out because they're pissed off yeah and then that's when you know that we've done a good job yeah and then you go to sleep. Like, that is the best. Yeah. Never ending barbershop, and you don't even have to cut hair. Uh huh. Yeah, that's <laughs> the best. Mean? That's like, a dream, bro. Right? I want to get somebody to fill in and cut the hair. That's so what I'm saying, just dude. Fucking roast you them. just get the vibe. Focus on the roast. Yeah, dude. Like, think about how many jokes you fucked up because you're trying to get like an edge right. Yeah. You know but how mean? do you guys do when you like, because if you think of something funny, what you, and you just, like, I would just say it on the podcast, yeah. you know, that, isn't that a problem? Like, you just, you try to like. A little, a little, like, Sometimes you say stuff on the pod, but like that that's just like a seed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I find, this is my own personal opinion. I don't know if this even makes sense, but like I find that the things that work in conversation will be like premises. Mm -hmm. So like I'll say a funny premise with the boys and then everyone will kind of like tag and like we'll kind of like riff on this idea. Like, oh, isn't that funny? And then it kind of ends there. But yeah. like on stage, it has to be a premise and then it has to be punchlines. Like you yeah. can't just go on stage with premises. Yeah. And that's what people do when they first start open micing. Yeah. Is they go on stage and they're like, yo, I'm funny with my boys, but now I'm on stage, I'm bombing. Yeah. It's like, oh, because the things that are funny with your boys is premises. When you're on stage, it's got to be premise and punchline. You got to do both the work because yeah. you're the only motherfucker talking with a microphone. So yeah, like sometimes you say it on the pod, but like, and you could take it on stage because there's a lot more work that has to be done with it. And then other times, if you know you're sitting on like heat, you just might not bring it up on the pod. Yeah. Like, I have a few stories that I hold back that I haven't told. Um, but I, I saw that you guys, when we went to the show in Manchester, a lot of the stuff was like dedicated to just Manchester and like yeah, yeah. Andrew, when he was in, I think you guys went to Dubai or something after mm -hmm. and he did like a whole show about Abu Dubai Dhabi. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So that's just like a couple days you got yeah. to write that set. Yeah. And, but that's just the years you guys have been doing it. Just the experience. and the, Yeah. Yeah. And. And you kind of like, Andrew's really good at this. He's the one that kind of really taught me how to do it. And I've always loved it. Like, that's like my favorite style of comedy, low key, is like, like cultural, ethnic, racial, like examining those components of society. Yeah. Because they are completely superficial. And at the core, everyone is like the same human being. But mm -hmm. then we have sort of like these flowery coatings of like culture and shit that like we kind of make up. Yeah. It's just funny to examine them. And my dad used to travel and go to Europe all the time, and he would come home and tell us stories about, like, all the places he went. And he's like, oh, Dutch people are like this. And he'll, like, do an impression of a Dutch guy. And I would just die laughing, bro. I thought it was so funny. Mm -hmm. And I really think that it, like, informed my comedic sensibility. So like, I got older, and now we get the chance to travel and go to these different places. And I'm just like, yeah, I just like doing that. So yeah. we'll just, like, riff. We'll just go eat, and we'll just, like, talk about, you know, oh, yeah, like, what is this place like? Like, we go to Russia. Same deal. It's like... Yeah, Russians do stuff like this. And mm -hmm. like we'll just riff and joke about it. But Andrew's so good at asking the right questions to pinpoint the elements that he wants to talk about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you get a lot from observing, but when you have such a limited amount of time, like you gotta really dig into a culture and for people that are like immersed in the culture to get the info out to turn it into jokes. Yeah. And Schultz, in my opinion, is like the best at it. Yeah, I agree. Bro, it's so fun. Yeah. That yeah. is the most fun thing. You got a good thing going, bro. You got a good team, good group of friends. It's bro. it's I got really lucky. I got yeah. really lucky. I don't really know if you can plan it, but like, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely want to get back on this side, you know, cause I'll be closer to my real friends and stuff like that and mm -hmm. just build them up. You know, I feel like I'm at a point in my life now where I could like, I, I like try to scout talent. Like I, I have a few younger guys that I do the podcast with. Like I got my boy, Steven yeah, yeah, and the weatherman, the, Ryan, yeah. Ryan's doing stand up, and Ryan's really, really talented. I think he'll go really far. But like, how cool is that that now you get to build your guys? Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like build your own community. Like that is, again, that's the point of all this. Yeah. Like you yeah. get your community now that you can nurture and like set the values of. Yeah. I need to be like the Andrew on my team. Like I didn't want to be that, but now like fuck, somebody's got to do it, you know? Like yeah. I got to. 
If I you're gotta, the head honcho, but if you're the leader of the squad, like you gotta lead. I also gotta make sure I don't go down for some stupid shit, you know. And then everybody <laughs> comes down with me. But I don't fuck around. I don't drink, so I'm like uh, those days of me like making those stupid mistakes. Yeah, are hopefully behind me, except for the last London slip up. But that was just a joint and a fucking it's a joy. Uh, yeah, a yeah, joy. yeah, 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 yeah. That's so cool. And have you gone to your boy's shows? Um, yeah. Well, I I had a few friends, even like. Uh, and my old crew, Jason Nash, mm -hmm. he um, he would do shows where like we'd have like some like five hundred, maybe like a thousand people would be like the biggest venue we did, and he would let me open for him there. So I got like to try out like five ten minutes up there, and oh, I would really? do I would say like we did a show in Miami, and I I made it like a, about Miami. That's cool, but it's just quick, you know. Like I would have a few jokes, like set up punchline, but I wouldn't be out there long, you know. Yeah, yeah. So is there a different life where you try stand up? You think? Uh, that's the thing. You just got to really do it a lot to be good at it. You know, like I want to do too many things and I feel like I, I wouldn't want to half-ass that. Yep. That's something that- You can't really half-ass it. Mm -hmm. But there's no better feeling than like doing a good thing on stage and having people fucking scream and then like, you know. Bro, I, that's why I always say, like I always think it's like the most pure way to communicate with people, like mm -hmm. outside of like music maybe. But like, yeah. it's just a dude with a microphone and a room full of people all laughing and like in rhythm. Yeah, like it's like so beautiful to me. I don't. I truly love it. Uh -huh. I get a little sense of that with like a good performance of a video. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You get a, a tiny little bit of that. <sighs> it's delayed. That's the only problem. It's delayed. Yeah. Because I get that too. Like I'll post an episode of this pod or flagrant or whatever, and it's killing. Yeah. I'm like oh, that's sick. Yeah. But you're just seeing the numbers. Like it's too gamified. Like yeah. when you're with the crowd, when the, with the people. Like, yeah. I don't know. There's nothing better. I really love people. I love being in the room of people, and like everyone gets on the wave with a joke or like even like a crowd work thing like. Someone says something and then you immediately say what everyone's thinking. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not that funny, as long as you're just acknowledging the feeling and slicing it perfectly, yeah, that's like the biggest laugh. Yeah. And it's like, oh. When people could tell like this is not written. and But you were able to articulate the feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like musicians and poets do this the same way where like a lot of people have gone through heartbreak, but certain people can write it in a way lyrically that is so beautiful and so poignant and so concise that mm -hmm. it gives us so much satisfaction to read it because it communicates exactly how we feel into very tangible, real words. And comedy is a similar way where it's like, yo, we're all feeling this way about a thing, but you articulated it in a way that's like- As you got pointed out, comedy's honesty, you know? It's always, there's it's, there's the truth. Yeah, bro, that's, we I, did we podcast for three hours? No, I doubt it. Is it? I got a date. I gotta get <laughs> Wait, do you really? I got to let her know that I could. <laughs> Yo, my bad. <laughs> no, Yo, we, could, we could do it if you, yeah. if you need to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I could fucking my do bad. this I all lose, day. I lose track of time. Yeah, same. This tent, bro, this this set out here in the wilderness, you know, it's crazy. This is the it's, casino, dude. Yeah. This Pumping is, oxygen in here. Yeah, it's really dope. I appreciate Sick, you bro. coming through, uh, brother. I'm gonna, I'm most likely 99% moving here in the next couple months, so it's good that I got a good crew out here, you know? 99%. I'm moving out here, but I'm going to keep my place in LA. So I just don't know how much time I'm going to spend yeah. there because I have my sets built there. I do have a crew there and not all of them want to move. So yeah, of course. I need to decide like who's going to be my LA crew, make sure they're set up with like other things to do. Now they're like picking up other jobs. So my buddy wants to build a, a studio, like a podcast network and then do produce shows for other guys. Like my, like the weatherman wants a weather show spinoff, you know, and do stuff like that. Like, I don't care to, like we were talking about when I saw this whole place, like, would you start like other shows, like a, a podcast network? Mm -hmm. I don't care to do that, but just the, being able to put on other guys and, and like you see talent and you know that they, these guys have potential just to kind of give them a boost. For the love. Yeah, for the love. I don't yeah. care to team 10, take 10% of everybody, you know, like I don't, yeah. I don't give a shit about that. But yeah. That's, that's the whole point, dude. Give as much as you can. Yeah. Hell yeah, Even bro. if it doesn't come back, just giving. There's yeah. nothing better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you for coming right. through, man. Thanks, Let's bro. Let's do this again. A hundred percent, yeah.